Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, episode 83. And today, we have a good one. We're going to talk about the best card in every single color. So the the, the goats of uh, Magic the Gathering. Uh, joined Definitely. with me today, Saffron Olive, probably better known as Seth. Hey, How are you? I'm doing good. We have the Asian Avenger Krim. What's up? Yo, I'm excited to talk about the best cards in Commander in certain colors. <laughs> and Budget Commander Tomer. What's going on, Tomer? Hey. Currently, I'm very uh, jealous of the Asian Avengers drip today. Krim, you're looking... <laughs> the, the swag is really cool. It's so... Uh, uh, like, the, the camera loves it so much, they green yes. screen part of it out. I love that. But I, really- I love the shirt too much. I got this pup shirt. It's a band. They're it's great. got like a '90s '90s revival look to it. I feel like the tie dye yeah. effect, and and it matches my hair theme. So it yes, is. <laughs> that's sick. All right. <laughs> and if you're curious what's going on, check us out on YouTube, where you can actually see <laughs> the Asians Avengers shirt. Uh, but if you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes or Apple's, be sure to subscribe. And uh, to finish introductions, I am the Cod Father Richard, and uh, we'll be taking you through. The best card of every color, uh, so Wooberg, white, blue, black, red, green. We have colorless, and then we have non-color fixing lands. Uh, if you want to support the show, be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform. Be sure to check out Richard's Garage at mtggoldfishmerch.com, <laughs> where you can buy playmats, sleeves, tokens, etc., etc., uh, to help support the show. Now, okay. before we get into the best colors, there is some bookkeeping we need to do. Three episodes ago, episode 80, we did the great designer search where we uh, put our our design chops to the test. Each designed two cards, had the listeners vote on the best cards. So we're going to just quickly go over the results here. Uh, Best flavor, marked for completion, won by 31%. Phyrexian Penny Tray came up second at 23%. Uh, Best gameplay, Sword of Nightmare and Nausea. One at 23%, nice. followed by Asha, Garden, Guardian Reborn. Uh, best Moneymaker category, D4 Station Axe, won by a landslide, actually, 46%. Uh, so Wizards wizards take note, just print incredibly broken cards. <laughs> yeah, it's just break the format. Hey! <laughs> this really Asha, Jewel Guardian Lotus Reborn, 22%. And then Best Overall, the, the, the ultimate category here. Asha Guardian Reborn takes it home at 24%, narrowly beating Sword of Nightmare Nausea at 22%. Ooh. So uh, Asha was actually in three of these categories in the top two, Nightmare of Nausea in two. So uh, those are uh, kind of the consensus favorites. So congrats to Tomer for making the Angel and uh, Krim for making the Blue Black Sword for Wizards. Uh, if we see this in the next set, we'll know. <laughs> they owe me. We'll know yeah, they owe the royalty me. checks. I'm going to make a big stink on Twitter that they didn't credit me or give me royalties for making a five-color angel, the most original (laughs) idea in the world. The the most obvious idea, which they've decided not to do ever. They haven't done it for a decade. Like, what are they doing? Anyway. All right. Let's hop. We got a lot of cards to debate, or maybe not debate. Uh, So we, we, we do a lot of tier lists on the, on the channel where we talk about a lot of cards. Today we're distilling it to the top two. Uh, the best card, and then we have a runner-up just in case uh, there, there's some controversy or discussion or anything. Uh, we'll start with white, okay? Now, white, uh, I have uh, as number one land tax, followed by Teferi's Protection. Seth has Teferi's Protection, Smothering Tithe. Tomer has land tax, Smothering Tithe. Krim has Teferi's Protection, Farewell. Uh, so... Three smothering tie, or no, two smothering ties, three to fairies protections, two land taxes, and then a, a farewell thrown in there. Yeah, you guys Wait. don't have any love for so, the land tax? I think, I, well, I, mean, I think land tax is like the most underrated card in Commander. Like, out of every single card, list. it's the most. <laughs> We're not trying to talk about sleepers, like bad cards. <laughs> no, no it's, it's legit. Good. These are the it's best legit cards. top two. No, it's legit top two, and people just do not run it. it. Imagine, like, it's like an ancestral recall that keeps recalling every single turn. <laughs> it's It really is that good. It's so good. But it's only drawing it you three lands. Cards. Yeah, lands. you need lands. 
Uh, you know, you keep all I, those sketchy one-landers yeah. and two-landers that we talked about last episode. You need that land tax. By the way, of one-land hands, one-land land tax, snap keep, right? Uh, oh, you know, yes. You know what? You know what essentially draws you three lands each turn, but doesn't require you to play 20 basic lands and works in multi multicolor decks without a lot of basics? That would be Smothering Tide. Smothering Tide is just like the 2020 version of land tax. It does everything land tax does, except it does it way better. And you get the upside that someone's going to cast a big card draw spell and you get 10 treasures and you win the game. Like, I don't know, to me, it's, uh, I mean, I like land tax. It would probably be in my top 10 uh, of like cards. But maybe, maybe, maybe in my top 10, but I think that yeah. land tax is just smothering tithe with a lot of downside. Absolutely. I mean, so Tomer has I, both there and he, yeah, so Tomer I, actually chose both of them. And he put land tax above smothering tide. You still stand I'm on by the that? Tide. Yes, because land tax is a one drop and smothering tide is a four drop. Obviously, I think smothering tide has a more powerful effect, but the mana cost is what's the main difference here. You can do a turn one land tax, and it feels really good. And the and land tax is not strictly worse. It's like there are a lot of benefits to just putting extra cards into your hand because it fuels reanimator strategies and it's literal de- deck thinning we always like meme about like a fetch land not like being deck thinning <laughs> Wait, no, but when you no, take literally no, all your lands when you take all your lands uh, out it's literal deck thinning and i and, wow. like the words and, tumber speaking uh, yes give me off team tumber and, give me off team tumber and, <laughs> so you draw you draw three cards and it's like great like now you have the next three land drops but then you draw three more cards now you get to discard down to hand size you can set up reanimation strategies you can discard your excess lanes and get them back with like a sun titan effect um or a savine's reclamation get back two lands for example uh you could if you're in green you could like well you're probably not gonna use it in green actually but in theoretically you could do like spend reclamation and stuff like that it's like it's like really good like it, yeah oh you're only drawing lands but like you're drawing three of them and you need lands but, like can't you make those same arguments about Smothering Tide, be like, oh, well, it's also artifact entering the battlefield, so it sure. can trigger my thing when an artifact enters the battlefield, and I can tap them all for improvise. So, like, so, yes, so someone it's can get rid two, of Smothering right? Tide, and then you're back to square square one, right? Or I, I, you can never hit your third land drop like Krim and never make it to Smothering Tide. Hey, it's the fourth land. <laughs> yeah. I always hit the third land. I know land for, tax I never gets go you over to Smothering Tide. Like, like, that's why I'm not, so Krim chose none of these ramp spells. He chose Farewell to Fairies Pro. I was just okay. the ramp. Okay. Can you wait? Are you saying okay? I'm looking at this list. Tomer, you and Richard choose Lantex as the number one white card, right? Yes. Over to Fairy's Protection. Yes. The yes. go to get at Lantex is good. I'm not going to deny that it's good. To Fairy's Protection. I just want you to like think about this card. That's great. All these resources <laughs> you're gonna, you like. That's cool. That's cool. And you know what? The specialty here is that to Fairy's Pro. Gets me out of whatever shenanigans y'all are trying to do with that silly mana. I can I can just I have an emergency get out of jail free card. I have a whatever I'm out. I don't have to deal with it for a whole turn cycle. That is huge. How and and not, it's not only that it's Teferi's protection is aggressively costed. So I just feel like you having this one off get out of jail free card no matter what I'm untouchable is infinitely like. How is that not the best card? How many times has this saved everybody when they've casted this card? I would put this at three, personally. It's pretty close, close, but I like land tax because you can be proactive with it. So Teferi's Protection is a reactive card. Land tax, you can snowball out of control. You don't don't actually snowball because you're just hitting one land a turn, right? But it gives you like a consistent game. Like if I was in the Hunger Games, you're uber Magic Gathering. Like like you had to win this next game of EDH. And I opened my opening hand. The one card I want to see there is land tax. Weird because I feel like, okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe in your opening hand, that's correct. But there is no point where I draw a Teferi's Protection and it's bad. That's true. Right, like there is no early well, game. Well, if it's like, in your okay, starting hand, game, it's bad. It's, but, I, but is it, though? Because I feel secure. I feel safe. Like but you're not going to use it for like, <laughs> no, until like turn six or so. But proactive or, or reactive, A, I'm playing an aggro deck. I want to protect my board. Even, and it even protects me against my number two card. So like the <laughs> thing that's nice about <laughs> this is that mana. no matter what, <laughs> aggro... D- like you know, like d- like control whatever game plan it is. Teferi's Pro can use it, and I'm talking not just mono white. 
I'm talking any color that has white. So, like, this and, is, like, to me, the face card of white. I mean, that I would argue yeah. that that in Smothering Tide, they're the two face cards of white. Because same thing, you can play it in five color decks, and Smothering Tide's still going to be good. Where land True. tags, you're probably not going to play, because you need fetches and triumphs, and you're just not going to you're not going to be able to get enough lands to actually make land tags powerful. And you don't want to cut all the powerful utility lands that we'll talk about later to play more basic, so you can discard them to hand size and thin my deck. Like, no, no, that's a that's a ridiculous plan. That's a bit of a I, mean, to, to be fair, to be so, if I had to go top four, okay, it would be land tax to fairies plus. <laughs> Mothering tides, sure. <laughs> like like they they would they would they would slot. They're like very close. Uh, and I then you mentioned that land tax is top ten at least. You're putting it up there. Yeah, it's it's up there. The actually out of all of our lists, the only card that I might quibble with not being in my top five or ten, farewell is the one that stands out to me as being like, yes, it's really good, but it seems a little replaceable. Part of how I evaluate these cards is like. How big is the drop to the next? What would I replace it with? If I got to replace it with something else, how big is the drop there? And uh, that's why the other thing, reason I think Teferi's Protection wins out over Smothering Tithe or Land Tax is like, you can replace Land Tax with Smothering Tithe, Smothering Tithe with Land Tax, and you'll be fine. There isn't really another Teferi's Protection. Farewell, it is the best Wrath, but there's a lot of Wraths in right. Like, you got Astir Command, you got Wrath of God, you got Vanquish the Horde, you got Undo Inversion. There are many, many, like, similar things. So even though I think it's the best wrath, it's hard for me to consider it one of the best white cards overall, just because I don't think it's that big of a drop to the next card, whatever I would replace it with in my deck. I, really? I would argue that, that they're both, I would argue yeah. the drop is absurd after yeah. Farewell. Like, I, I, I know it's, it, it may just... First <laughs> it, I think it, it's honestly, the first Honestly, like, yeah, this is the it's wrath, my number right? four. Every, <laughs> for me, it would go, like, Teferi's Pro, Farewell, Smothering Tithe, then Land Tax. Like so, we're like kind of close here, but like I think farewell is the the drop off to the next sweeper. Even austere command, it's not a, austere command is nowhere near this. You get to choose all the modes if you wanted to. You get to it's graveyard hate and it's exile. Whatever it is, you're done. It's done. Mm-hmm. I don't have to deal with it anymore. It is permanent, permanence, and I, also, I love that. I also think that the fairies protection is more replaceable than you you would say because. Clever concealment, for example, if you're if you're using Teferi's protection primarily as a way to just phase out your creatures to or phase out all your permanents, right? It phases out all your permanents. That one can be cast for for zero mana. So there is like an argument that this that card is a little bit better in creature focused decks or token no. decks, especially token decks. I think it would be even stronger. Fair argument can be replaced by two wraths or something. Like, yeah. like two <laughs> cards to cover two That's halves of Teferi's Van- problem, Vanderblast right? is actually basically farewell because it blows up all the artifacts. No, no I'm like, saying farewell is. Defa- is Teferi's Protection I'm, saves you, though. Like, you're cutting off, yeah. like, the entire half of the most important half of the card, which is, oh, my God, I'm dying. Someone's comboing. I'm not going to die. I'm the one that lives, uh, and I and tap and get a chance to win. So I feel like not only, not only that do you logic live. lops off a whole half of the card, the, the most important it's be- half, It's better I would than say. a counter spell because, like, yeah. you live uh, and other people die, right? So, like... It's but I, un- I would say it's the same thing about that Farewell, all though. all three players, like, and you're, what, you're, that's way bigger. I, uh, but I'm, I'm just saying that as in terms of, yeah, it's a fairies protection is better than clever concealment and guardian faith. I'm not arguing yeah. that. But when you're saying like, oh, farewell is so replaceable, you could just replace it with like an austere command or whatever. The, like the exile is so huge. It's not, it's not a, a, a fair comparison at all. Like there's so many ways to get that. like to, to, there's so many ways that, uh, things either are granted indestructible these days or they have like mass reanimation strategies. The fact that you can just get rid of all the problems and they can't ever come back, like that's that's enormous. Yeah. It's just something that you can like and I would say that the drop off feels a lot like that. It would feel like yeah. if I were to say Teferi's Pro one and then I don't know, clever concealment two, right? Like yeah, the, the, sure, difference. those are good cards, but there is a huge drop between those two. So Tomo would have I farewell would... in top five, right? You said it you just yes. follow up. I would go. Um, I'll go. Land tax, smothering tithe, to fairies protection, farewell. Those would be my top four. I, I would Ooh, even have yo. farewell in top five. Maybe not even yeah. top ten. I think wow. it would be my I top put, like, ten. Uh, the the stupid. What's the one drop that fetches land? As for sentinel, weather wayfarer. No one's mentioned As for sentinel, as for sentinel. reclamation. As for sentinel, generous gift, feel. maybe even up here somewhere. Like, I oh yeah, probably. I put generous gift over I put, farewell. I put as per sentinel above farewell too, but uh, that's still top five. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't even okay. feel like Esper Sentinel's above Farewell. There's no way. 
There's no way. Well, this it draws is so me. many cards. It it is. Is. You can actually draw your two farewells. Like, sure. Off your command rest mm-hmm. you, you, off of Esper Sentinel and build your farewell you might with draw the Esper Sentinel. A, a few cards and whatnot, especially if there's Seth at the table who won't pay the one. But, the thing here is, but if you draw like two cards for a one drop, it's like, that's so good. Yeah, but what are you synergies. drawing, right? Like, what are you drawing? Cards. Not the key. Not the key. Okay. But I think the thing is, for me, I've learned over the years that card advantage is not as good as card quality. So, but, but what if card... you only put high quality cards into your deck? <laughs> there, but but no matter how much high quality is, there's always a lesser quality, right? So no matter what, the, yeah. and like if I know your deck, mm. I'm gonna know there's key cards I'm hating out, right? Like so, if if there's things that I'm more concerned about, like oh well, if all you have are a bunch of artifacts, then I don't care how many artifacts you play. If I exile them all. As a matter of fact, I want you to play all of them into my farewell. Right? I mean, like, strictly so, speaking, farewell is like way more card advantage than Esper Sentinel. Because you're probably doing like a 20 for 1 or something like that off of the farewell. <laughs> so like technically, right. well, you're the, actually the getting a lot of card advantage off that farewell. But in a in a different sense than you would normally count And in, in a multiplayer game, you're, it really is a 20 for 1 because you are hitting everybody. And that is oh. just a house. I mean, it's probably twenty for five or yeah, seven, yeah, or like uh, the sure. odds of you having 20. zero permanents <laughs> is kind of low. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Especially like, yeah, like obviously in a planeswalker deck, it's amazing. But like, I'm talking outside of a planeswalker deck. This thing is just, I again, I just feel like this is like Richard had mentioned the first board wipe. I don't feel safe anymore I uh, when I go I, if I have a wrath of God, an austere command. That doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I, I feel like most of the times. You'll more likely get blown out casting those things because destroy so many things get around it nowadays. It's just like farewell is just permanence until they make it somehow power creep. I don't, uh, so I, I don't see enough farewells on Clash to see this high. That's I, I think don't... I see way more undo inversions because people like are likely to actually play the undo inversion because it's a land than to slot you... a specific farewell in. <laughs> For me, it's I more am a the only concerns. one that plays it. Oh, maybe and, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm the like, only I don't one even play regardless tacks. of deck. And on top of that, that's the reason why everybody kills me. He's like, well, Krim plays very well. And if he top decks, I lose the game, right? So, like, how many times is it where I just sit there and I'm just like, if I farewell this, this is GG, right? And, yeah. oh, everybody kills me before I get to do it. Sometimes I've had it in my hand waiting for the right moment. I get too greedy. You got, you got but, some good farewells off, the. Oh, yeah, I've got good farewells. Wait, wait, wait. But we, we, we have a fifth guest on the show, guys. We have EDH Rec Chan coming in yeah. with. Okay. <laughs> we also have the top two cards now. Keep in mind mm-hmm. this EDH Rec, so budget may uh, may come into factor here. But 100%. these are the Starter top decks. two most played white cards: Swords the Plowshares, oh, Path to Exile. So not not the land tax, not the Smothering Tithe. Is land, land tax, tax is like thirty five dollars. Yeah, like Every I don't card here is okay. expensive that we yeah. mentioned. Every card it's here that we mentioned expensive. is at least ten dollars, right? Like, what's the cheapest something card? Like Farewell that. is like Farewell, six, maybe? I think, maybe. Yeah, it's like seven, six bucks. Seven, or something. seven, six. That's the cheapest. Yeah, that's. Would, would, uh, would you guys put a Swords to Plowshares in your top five or ten? No, I would put Gener. Like, if I'm if I'm going for budget inclusions, I really like Knight of the White Orchid in white decks that are, that are non green because Me it's too. it's a two drop. It's basically a three visits for white because it gets any plane, so it could get your duel. The duel enters the battlefield untapped, and it's a two-two first striker that can like hold equipment really well, and it's blinkable and stuff like that. And it's like less than a dollar, so that's that's one of the first ones I throw in to most of my non-green decks. So I put that up there, and then generous gift, generous if, gift, I think would be higher than swords or path for me if I'm going budget. Swords are bad. Budget, I'm gonna say you're generous gift than swords, and yeah, I'd also just play those. Those are just good cards, right? Yeah. Like yeah, swords and paths so overrated. They they might be the two most overrated cards in all of Commander. Like yes, not I not even know. close. Generous know. gift. Generous gift is is awesome. Like that that should be way ahead of those other two. I would have generous gift in my top five probably. Like every deck I play has a generous <laughs> gift in it. I usually don't play Swords or Path at all anymore. Like, mono color, five color, I don't care. It's not worth it. Killing any one thing, even efficiently, is just not That's not what you want to be doing in Commander. I want to see a debate video between, like, <laughs> Seth or Ed Krim on, on spot removal. That would tickle my fancy a lot. 
the, the biggest I, knock against generous uh, gift is beast within exists and it's the same thing right but those cards yeah, are right. like really they're the same yeah strong they're really yeah. good though they're the same and they're both really good like generous gift one and then swords but path no no path i, I like swords is, uh, like i guess ooh. in a mono white deck or something where you can like self ramp that's like a yeah. cool situation but like I don't know if I'm trying to self ramp by targeting my own thing here. That never feels good in command. Yeah, you, you you play the Knight of the White Orchid, you ramp, you catch up ramp, and then you self ramp at the path, right? It's like a yeah. uh, ramp and growth at that point. No, but I mean pathing pathing your own like one one incidental one one token or whatever in a token deck feels really good actually. It does yeah. it though? Is it better than pathing, I don't know, the commander your opponent's about to use? <laughs> yeah, no, get a basic. Because, yeah, because you but actually like, go up a land instead of down a card. No, but but like <laughs> yeah. I like the flexibility there like it's a one mana yeah. spot removal when you need it and then it's like a one mana it's like it has that flexibility to it i will and it's, it's yeah. mana fixing just like land tax by the way i run in my three color non-green decks that's how much i like yeah. land tax because you do a turn one land tax we were talking about in the previous episode about mulligans i'm like oh we you have to have your right thing land tax land tax doesn't say just planes this is any basic, so oh, like I have, a, I have an it's issue deck now. The only reason now. I play basic lands to make sure I could land tax. I've had, I have <laughs> a, had had like my What's the minimum deck? number of lands you need to run for land tax? I've run land tax with four basics. <laughs> I think. I think I I would. Love you, you just hope for the essential <laughs> recall and calling it done, right? I'd say like <laughs> I'd say like six or eight would be my minimum because yeah, you just need to get three lands off it, and then I feel yeah. like the card has already paid for itself. And then any more than that is like, oh, well, I have a Sun Titan. I'm going to do some shenanigans with it. Uh, but yeah, like you get like you, you, you mana fix yourself and you get three cards in your hand for one mana. And then anything else is just like the gravy train. So I would say like, yeah, six, six basics probably would be my minimum. I like, okay, white, I like white, the white. <laughs> We spent way too long on white. Blue like looks Landa. a lot easier here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so... Myself, Tomer, and Krim have the exact same ranking, which is Ristic Study 1, Fierce Guardianship 2, Seth, Cyclonic Rift 1, Ristic Study 2. So Seth is the outlier. Cyclonic Rift? How? Wait, y'all don't like Cyclonic Rift? Really? Oh, Cyclonic Rift is a house. Really? That's like, number, that's like number but three Ristic? for me, yeah. Uh, I like Cyclonic I think Cyclonic Rift is insanely good, but that's like number three. When you think, think of blue, you oh, think of Ristic, right? And I then think, Cyclonic Rift, maybe. See, the difference is y'all we always play against me, so your Cyclonic Rifts are great. I never get to, or my, your uh, Ristic Studies are great. I never get to play against myself. So <laughs> I think y'all are way more afraid of Ristic Study just because of our play group. Like, I think in a random play group, Cyclonic Rift is just a better card. But uh, if you're playing against me and always drawing cards, then Ristic Study is great, but. Cyclonic I mean, Rift I, does something no other blue card can do. Like, if you love Farewell, like, it's the blue Farewell. Except it's instant speed, and it doesn't even blow up any of your stuff. It really is the 20 for 1. Like, R- Rist- every good thing about Farewell is just better with Cyclonic Rift. I, I think, think there's, Cy- a, there's, there's, there's no argument on Cyclonic Rift and how good yeah. it is. It's definitely a house. But I, Ristic Study yeah. is 3 mana. Cyclonic Rift, the value you're talking about, is a 7 mana. And I just feel like oftentimes in a game... I don't have to fire off the rift because I've drawn a million cards off Ristic Study, and I could just slowly counter people out, and so the board never really gets out of hand. So isn't I, uh, isn't the best rift the one that ends the game in your hand though? Kind of like Teferi's Protection. Like if you win the game while you're holding that card, you feel amazing because you know that like nothing oh, yeah. could possibly go wrong. But if you slam Which, down Ristic and somebody doesn't have an you, answer you to it, you just win. Deploys and you die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I mean, actually, sometimes. If but I were to put, a like, cards. a top 10 most overrated cards of all time, Swords would be up there, and Rift, it would be one Oh, of my three. God! Really? I used to wow. think Rift was insane. Now I don't play it because I think it's a terrible card. Um, oh, my God! I, I was shocked that you guys put it so high. It can be a decent card, but a lot of the times, it's win more, or it just prolongs the game and loses you more because it's not a real card. Especially overrated, in Richard. Okay. I think that was the hottest TVs? take I've ever heard on a Commander Clash podcast. Yeah, that... Calm down, Richard. Calm what? down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm good with spice, Over... but that like I feel I feel Just like think, I'm gonna feel this. All in the, the games where we've rifted on Clash and it prolonged the game by an hour, and the person who rifted did not win. When was the last time someone won with the rift on Clash? I've seen but, way I mean, more failures of rift than. But the person successes. who rifted probably. Um, 
would have died an hour earlier if they hadn't rifted to stay alive. Like, but if you had literally the... any other card, like a farewell or something, you might have actually like made a comeback, right? But, but your instead, mono blue, you just like, like prolonged uh, the game, and everyone just re etb'd you and like killed you some more. Right? They 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 pulled further ahead, right? Like mm. you, you slowed down the game, and they just got more card value out of everything. So but you I just actually out. Don't like rift, you just out I don't, I don't, I don't want to argue about rift. An absurd amount, though. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, is fierce guardianship the, the best counter spell? Below. Uh, yes. That's oh, what I was going to yes. ask. Why? I I would disagree with that. Like you're competing with force mana what, drain. What you're, you're competing mana with drain? force. You're yeah, competing with force of negation. Um, I would argue that force of will would be if I was going to put a number one counter spell, it would be force of will over. No way. See, oh, you need I, a blue okay, card here's, though. Here's this is a free spell that doesn't cost you an extra card. Exactly. Force exactly. of will doesn't hit it creatures. It doesn't force will counter anything. Who cares? Yeah. If your deck is built around your commander, which is the commander format, you want to be able to cast your commander and then uh, protect it from anything. And anything means basically board wipes or target removal. And this just does it for you, and it doesn't cost an extra card. It's just well, can you? I, I will say, that last can drain. Uh, it's busted. Mana drain is uh, by far. Like, okay, so if it, I think fierce guardianship for those exact reasons, it's free. It doesn't go down cards. Yeah, I can't counter creatures, but most of the stuff I'll care about is probably non creature. And then the the next counter spell would then be mana drain because although it costs yeah. mana, it's ramp. It does get you your X amount of mana hitting a six mana spell. Whatever, just netting you any mana at all is big. So then it's force. Of will or negation, your choice is probably force of will, uh, and then negation. So I still feel like Fierce Guardianship costs no cards, comes down, gives you a, essentially allowing you safe passage for your commander. I, I love that. I want incentives and reasons to play my commander. And if I get to, I get, I was already going to do it. And on top of that, if I haven't, I get a bunch of value on top. Why the heck not? That's amazing. It's- it's pretty weird for me if the argument's going to be like commanders are so important, so that makes Fierce Guardianship better. Wouldn't that also be a reason that Force of Will was better? Because you can stop your opponent's all important commander that they built their deck around <laughs> and that is just like controlling the game. Like uh, to mm-hmm. me, that seems like that would be an argument in favor of Force of Will. And remember, you have to have your commander on the battlefield. Force of Will always stops whatever you need to stop. There's games when your commander's not sitting out there, and when you're paying three mana for a negate, it's kind of sad. It's not, like, unplayable, but it's it's not good if you're three mana negating. Like, uh, I don't so know. So you, can, you I, can cast a three mana Fierce Guardianship. It's hard to cast a five mana Force of Will uh, uh-huh. if you don't have a blue card to pitch. Also, if you're playing you a five blue... color deck, Fierce Guardianship yeah. is still good. Uh, yeah. I, I doubt you play Force of Will. I don't uh, think you play Force of Will. The other counterspell you guys have mentioned is Arcane two. Denial. Any... I like that. I like that potential for a lot. that as a top counter spell. Like it costs mana, but you get cards back. Cards. And your opponent yeah. gets cards, so they don't feel bad and murder you the rest of the game because you countered their spell. It's less of a net. It's less of a card net loss compared to the rest of the table because you get yeah. back your card that you spent. Your opponent gets goes up one card, but your other two opponents are still neutral. So you're actually just down. You're actually just down one card as opposed to being down basically two cards because your two other opponents who didn't get didn't interact with the situation uh, are up one card over you and the opponent who just got countered. So I, I like that card a lot. I, that's my favorite budget choice. But I would put it underneath Force of Will, uh, Force of Negation, and the, oh, those are only in like blue heavy decks. Like if I'm not in a blue heavy deck, I can't run them. But Mana Drain for sure. Uh, Swan Song, probably, and then that isn't it. Then, then isn't it worse than just straight up counter spell? I would rank Arcane Denial behind just literal counter spell. I like Arcane <laughs> Denial more than counter spell. Actually, it's just, no, it's I, easier like to cast. Than counter spell, yeah, yeah. it's easier and to cast, the, the and it doesn't draw. put you down as many cards. And it yeah, feels but, bad, so your opponent like, oh, no, you counter up two cards. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, <laughs> but you countered their best card. Right? Yeah, right. The reason, you countered like, the thing you cared about, then they just drew yeah. some random stuff, <laughs> and you replaced the card that you just spent. So, but if I counter spell, I stop what they care about, and they don't draw some random stuff. Like, yeah, but then you also, also don't draw random stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then the two people who didn't participate in it are now up a card compared to the two of you. So you're down two cards over the rest of the table compared to one with Arcane Denial. I refuse All to play right. Arcane Denial. I love it. <laughs> EDH, EDH Reckon Counterspell Cyclonic Rift. So counter you know, spell budget reasons. It's just budget. Always, it's got to be budget. I'm yeah. surprised. Cyper, Cyper's expensive. 
Like, isn't it like yeah. twenty something dollars? Yeah, but it did thirty. Used to be, right? Thirty. Something, I think everyone yeah. just has one from yeah. the good old days. Standard. I do have a guys. bunch when they were like they were like they were. I remember they were like five bucks when I was picking them up in Return to Ravnica. That was nice. Good times. Yep. All right, black. Black's an interesting one. Hard. Uh, I have Vampiric Tutor reanimate. Seth has Demonic Tutor Dothy Voidwalker. Tomer has Demonic Tutor Vampiric Tutor. Krim has Demonic Tutor Toxic Deluge. So, so oh. much to unpack here. <laughs> I love Krim. Which is the better tutor, Vampiric or Demonic? And you guys all I... seem to think Demonic over Vampiric. What, what would demonic. your argument be for Vampiric? I'm confused because Demonic, one more mana, card goes to your hand. Vampiric, one yeah. less mana. But you have to wait an entire turn or have some sort of additional combo to actually take advantage of the card. It's less mana, right? It's it's two less mana, right? Because you you basically end of turn Vampiric Tutor, draw into it, and then do the thing. But you have to so wait to an me, extra Vampiric turn. Vampiric Tutor is much more flexible. Mm-hmm. Whereas Vampiric Tutor, you need two mana plus whatever you're trying to cast. And usually by the end of the last person's turn, you know what you're trying to tutor for. So it's essentially a free tutor it costs you a card right it's like card disadvantage but it's essentially a free does... tutor as opposed to two mana for demonic tutor vamp tutor gives you knowledge like richard had mentioned because mm-hmm. you get a turn cycle but i think demonic tutor and the value of like seth had mentioned just putting it into your hand on the turn you need it like right like i can't wait a turn if i need a board wipe right or i can't wait a turn if i'm looking for my combo piece or closing out with a gary like, I, I need to end it now, and that's just going to happen for sure without that, any that, external that only sources. when you draw a Demonic Tutor off the top, right? Sure. Or right. I guess if you're tapped out. Because you, you well, end of turn Vampiric Tutor, so you can grab it for your turn. You can end of turn, but, like, if you don't have the time to wait. Yeah. Like, it, like Demonic Tutor gets exponentially better uh, as the game goes on. And, you know, like, when you have so much more mana and resources, just do whatever you want right as you grab it like it's huge i i think i value that over and i love my instant speed but i value that over vamp tutor even though vamp tutor does give me more info so i like richard is correct it gives you all the info you need and it's one less mana but just the ability to have it right away Mm -hmm. i'm I'm the same on that it's just the like if if the board develops in a way that i'm now know what i want to tutor for being able to tutor for the thing and then immediately cast it is worth the extra one mana to me. Like, like but... demonic tutor for a land is super key, right? Because like if you miss uh-huh. a land drop and you're holding vampiric tutor, you, yeah. you miss your land drop. Whereas you can demonic tutor for that land and, and play it immediately. Yeah, uh, but I, I think it's pretty close. I, I'm still not sure what the answer is because like there's so many times where you like end of turn vampiric tutors untap six mana farewell or something, right? Like a play mm-hmm. that's not possible with demonic tutor because it costs you two mana but like you said you could demonic tutor for your finisher and just play it right away and like end the game you can they're both like so that. good like they're the most the most flexible tutors at the cheapest price like it's just it's really hard to, to understate how good like i don't like tutoring for like more than two mana if it's like a three mana tutor i really i really pause and think about it. i don't really like grim tutor that much but when it's that one mana and you can get anything, or it's two, and you can get anything. Uh, it just, it feels, when I play those cards, it feels so much smoother than any alternative, essentially. It's just so good. Uh, Tomer's list might be right. I think there is a pretty strong argument to those two cards being one and yeah. two, but that's a little boring. So, so, so <laughs> I didn't want to go to your tutor. We have a little tutor. sneaky ones in here. Deluge, <laughs> Reanimate, Voidwalker, and I yeah. think I put in Reanimate for diversity. I think yeah. it would be Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, if I had to really do it. Yeah, uh, I, Seth, I, I think would be, be able to say... Demonic and then Vampiric, yeah, if I was just strictly ranking him on power, yeah. Do, do you put Deluge over Vampiric Tutor, Krim? It sounds kind of blasphemous, but like that's only because yeah, we've already got two tutors. Respect. Uh, and I, like so, like I'm like okay, sure. I thought but, this like, was the top two, not the top most variety sake. <laughs> no, 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 no. Tomer's but, right, right. I, I think I think we he got is the right. What? All right, that's what he right. called yeah. girl, like on best like colorless I, cards. I, I think Daily is high though. Wow, I, it's we... not even a variety thing. Like I would actually think that okay. Demonic Tutor, Let me just very good. My colorless. And then I, I could see Toxic Deluge being a top, like for sure, a top three card for me. Um, where it alternates between like Vamp Tutor and Toxic Deluge, 
obviously you can vamp tutor to get toxic deluge so yeah i i guess that's fair but deluge is by far if if it's when you think of like farewell it is the sweeper but like at efficiency and how and like how well costed toxic deluge is it's such a good wrath it's so it, and it allows me to also play a game plan of sweeping the board and keeping my stuff around giving things perfectly minus five minus five for three mana as opposed to like four mana for a languish or something like that or not having to blow up my own stuff this is big especially when i like example like a demon deck all my things are six power and toughness i can do i can for a cheap amount of mana i can do a lot and i can devastate the board with it so i really like toxic deluge i know there's other things like there's definitely a card we should talk about that I actually think would be higher than Toxic Deluge, but I think it's just kind of like known that like no one plays it in casual because it's so busted and it's an enchantment. Um, the three mana enchantment in, in black. But I think that Toxic Deluge is some is guaranteed to be a top five card for me. I have the same issues with Toxic Deluge as Farewell, where I think Toxic Deluge is the best wrath in the format, but I don't know if I'd put any Wrath in my, like, top 5 or top 10. I think it would be kind of, like, borderline. I just don't think the drop to, like, Damnation is that What about that the huge, Meatball Massacre? Like... I remember we were, like, or... so high on Meatball oh. Massacre. It hasn't even been mentioned. Yeah, Krim, I mean, Krim really loves massacre. that. I like Meatball Massacre, too. I Wait, wasn't even specific. called again? I forget what it's called. games where you deluge, you have to pay, like, 12 life. Now, if you try to Meatball, that'd be, like, a 14-man oh. Meatball. <laughs> what, yeah, what's the name a, yeah. of the card, actually? Is it I not Meatball Massacre? massacre. Oh, okay. oh. Yeah, the Meat Hook Massacre. Like... There it is. I've never not called it that. Like, so, like I just always know <laughs> it as the Meatball Massacre. I don't like Toxic Deluge. Like, I think Damnation is, Dude, what? This, this is not on. standard where you're like, oh, okay, turn three, I need the wrath, I'm gonna die, right? Like you don't need to be that hyper mana efficient. No, uh, but you can stun like, you, a like, lot. I guess of if setup. you're trying to demonic tutor into Deluge, that's yeah. five mana, so that's more doable. Or you can but... you can wipe the board and then redeploy on the same turn. Like taking your entire turn yeah. to wipe the board feels real bad. But the difference between three and four is not that much. Yeah. Well, it is when it's there's indestructible. Right, like that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Just nowadays, minus X, minus X, and exile are just at a premium, and destroy. It just is like okay, whatever. What right? about like? But you're, but you're so sad when you deluge for twelve, and then they to fairies pro. Oh what yeah, about, <laughs> I'm mean, yeah. bad against fairies. Yes, you yeah, are. Yeah. What about the yes, less than a dollar terrible. toxic deluge dead of winter? Have you ever, have you guys ever tried this card? It's yeah. three mana sorcery. It's All non snow creatures got negative X, negative X. Does, does that turn. count? How much does a snow basic cost? We're X so the number of snow basic with... from this year. <laughs> yeah, it was, was basic. Yeah, it's not really an option. Yeah, yeah. If you gotta if you gotta spend a dollar a basic, look if you've drafted a lot of cow time, okay. Uh, okay, I, mean, but, I don't know. Also have Dead of Winter is fine. Yeah, yeah. Mutilate, Languish, Crux of Fate. Uh, uh, Krim also alluded those... to this card, but I wanted to also hear your opinion on Necropotence because we don't play that much Necropotence. I know this card is incredibly powerful, but I actually just I actually in in budget list decks I don't run it in all my black decks. Actually, I'll run the Mog Tutor and Vampiric Tutor, but I don't like them in Reanimator decks in particular because it it says whenever you dis- like whenever you discard a card, you you exile it instead. And like I don't know that that's sometimes sometimes that's the thing. I'm like nah, I don't want to do that. Necropotence is busted. It is right. Like uh, I, it's just like I think the reason why we don't talk about or feel as strong as we should like it's not the first card that comes to mind is because on average this is not going to be in most decks because everybody just knows it's busted yeah. would is you it put it higher than demonic and play play casual no. tables i i would i would put this okay so if we were just talking about like at a casual table i'd probably put this for sure at least number two and if not really? number one i do no wow Necropotence is so good. Yeah, well, I mean, I Necro, think, I think that's fair. I think that should be your number it, one, still. then. Like, yeah, I, I mean, would be tut- like it would be above the tutors for sure. I mean, we're going to be talking <sighs> about like Dockside and Red, so obviously, like, so, if you're playing Dockside, and triple, the RC has said that's that's fine at casual tables. It's not strong. <laughs> then what's wrong with like, Oh, hey, that's also wrong. <laughs> so okay, so Necro, like, uh, discounting all the casual stuff, it is triple black, so that's a real cost in yeah. in multicolored decks. That's right, a problem. Right. 
it's also slow. Like, yes. you don't get the cards until your following turn. So if you need that Wrath or something, that's where Demonic Tutor or whatever is going to be much better because you get the card right away. And then it does make you skip your draw each turn. So if you want to keep drawing cards, you're going to always have this, like, delay until the next turn. And there's a life cost associated with it. So I think that Necro, I don't want to diminish its power. It's really good. I would rank it behind the tutors, and I, I would rank it in like the next the next group of cards behind the tutors, alongside the void walkers and reanimates and so forth, like somewhere in that like top seven or whatever. I think this card is a little bit overrated these days because like you think Necro is overrated. Necro? Like we have Bolus's Citadel as well, and that that doubles as a an easy combo win with like Sensei Stop yeah. and whatnot. And Phyrexian that card does arena? similar stuff. You can't. No, no, come on. Get out of here. <laughs> compared to Necro? Well, I got I, Blue Sun Zenith. Who needs Mystic Study? <laughs> Look, anytime <laughs> I see somebody resolve Citadel, it, it plays out very much the same as a Necropotent. So maybe that's a small sample size or something. But and they do it right away. It costs you one. Because they can life cast those spells right. for free, right? They cost some life, but like. You can immediately, it's like draw plus ramp at the same time. So I don't know. I feel like there's, there's more competition that, with Necropotence these days. I, I think in That's a truly casual mana. deck where you're just doing True. whatever the heck, yeah, they're pretty similar, right? But the mana, like three three mana versus, like if I take any six drop and made it uh. three mana, you'd be like, That's insane. Like Sun Titan, <laughs> three mana, insane, right? So Vol is an insane card. Make it three mana. It's like ridiculous, right? So I agree with that. Top five or seven. You got the cards like immediately and you got the cast them immediately. Kill you if you don't do the broken thing. And if you do the broken uh-huh. thing, you're not playing casual. So you just don't play it. Like you can't play it and then play like dirty mid-range threats. People will just murder you because they're like, oh my goodness, Necropotence, right? What? So you what Yeah, and like also your health is equi- like equivalent to like how much you can draw. But it, yeah. And like heaven forbid. But if you have the Reliquary Tower, this is absurd yeah. too. Like... I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like the power of this is is obviously, I think it, it's not being felt because we don't play it. Yeah. But if I play this on three, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how I lose. It's it's got a little <laughs> bit of the the like conflict problem is how I like to think of it. Like if you drop this with Reliquary Tower and activate it 15 times. The rest of the table is like, oh, my God, he's going to get 15 cards in his hand next turn. We better, like, we better wreck him. Like, do everything we can. So I think, like, the telegraphed aspect of it, I think, is, again, not saying it's bad, but I don't think it's quite as good as maybe people think it is. I think it's weaker than Rhystic Study, and I don't see that everybody going up in arms when somebody drops a Rhystic Study. I do. I do. I see red. (laughs) Yeah, Tomer Tomer does. I swear a Blood Oath to take that person out no matter what. So Which you're saying anyone lost after resolving this Necro. season? I can no. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I took it out of my decks. So it was like, this has anybody is lost after unfair. resolving Ristic? Yes, yes, <laughs> because yes. it's I a slow know. grind. Like yes, Necro is, you draw ten, combo off next turn with your protection because it's all mm. in hand, right? Like yeah, everybody is gonna want to punch you with Necro on board, but like, can they beat whatever you're about to do? And most likely, no. They have a turn cycle to figure they out. They have a though. turn while you're waiting yeah. there. And if it goes wrong, it goes pretty wrong. Your graveyard's kind of shut down. You can't draw cards right. anymore. You're out of life. I don't know. I So so can I play this on Clash? Like, is that what I'm getting? I can play this on Clash. It's not good, right? <laughs> well, it's not banned. Uh, it's not. Oh, it's banned, really. Really. They still put it in the top five and top seven or whatever, right? It's still okay. Oh, okay. Right. Like, it's very if good. If it becomes a problem that we can reassess, but I don't see the problem with you <laughs> oh. just jamming it a couple times and seeing. Oh, it will right. be. It, if I'm playing a black deck, this is going in there. I will put Urborg in my three color deck to play this. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, I don't know. Go I think this it. is like way better than any tutor. So it, it's a oh. all right. So EDH oh, yeah. rec has double tutors on top: demonic tutor, uh, vampiric tutor. Uh, it's actually expensive pretty telling that again. vampiric tutor is so expensive. It's actually like the second most played card. Yeah, what's going on? What's I'm reevaluating the white choices. Why is swords and path the top two most played? If if vampiric and demonic, people I was giving them a budget pass. I should, I should send you guys my email. Every people time people I think think say good. swords is bad, I get so many angry like comments and be like, Richard's just like farming clicks or something. I'm like, no man, it's actually just bad. 
Like people are very upset. They they okay, swear by swords to plowshares. I think it's a good. I'll Rich, still run swords. Richard, so I was like, are you trying to farm clicks? You just said no. psychotic rip is not good. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that was I, I don't know what's going on look right at now. All my deck is, I back up everything I say. Right. I used and, and here's a, here's the difference between all the haters. I've played both decks. I've played decks with Rift. I've played decks without Rift. I've played decks with Plowshares for like five years without Plowshares. So like as Just opposed to no like removal, these armchair companion players, I've never Osprey. tried it. <laughs> I've actually tried both, and this is my conclusion. <laughs> All right. What? Spice. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't, don't want to derail this, this, this podcast. Let's move on to red, okay? Uh, red, we have a clear number one. <laughs> Everyone has chosen Dockside Extortionist. Uh, at number Shahar. two, I chose Gamble. Everyone else chose Jessica's Will. Gamble over Jessica's Will? That doesn't make that sense. Where, that is wild. What is wild. going on here? Do you, do that you put is Gamble not, they're high not even all? close. I think Jessica's yeah. Will is up there. Top three, it's, top four. I run yeah, I Gamble and decks uh, that are like, whatever I discard doesn't matter. Totally yeah. don't believe nope. in Gamble. Wow. <laughs> no, because every single time... I. I Without fail. Anytime I, I gamble or something, I immediately discard the card at two to four. Without fail. Without it, it just happens every time. So I have to make I, sure it's like a graveyard focused deck, or else I'm just oh, not playing it. Wow. Oh, I, I, I run it like demonic tutor in red. Like yeah. it's the it's a red demonic tutor. Like for me, it would be yeah can. number number three. Dockside, Jessica's will gamble, and then you're down into the, like. Underworld Breach, I guess, maybe four. Blasphemous Act, Underworld Breach, Chaos Warp, like the next group somewhere in that range. Seth, Seth, clearly Seth and I do not value the the board wipes at efficient costs and what they do. (laughs) I I would say (laughs) it's Jessica's Will number two, then three, it's Blasphemous Act. Like, okay. like Blasphemous Act is so efficient at what it does, but but it is not. But even with that, and my love for sweepers, Jessica's Will is just too damn good. Like, the, obviously, w- nobody needs to... We don't need to discuss Dockside, right? Like, we understand it's they not powerful be enough at casual... <laughs> t- okay, that's, 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 that's bull hokey. Get this out of here, right? I'm, the surprised, power of I'm our surprised tables, that Necropotence Krim. is like, oh, oh we don't play it, it in casual, wow. but Dockside is like, uh, yes, this is a casual <laughs> card. Yes. We don't play Dockside Dude, either, I, though, right? We don't play Dockside yeah. either. That one but that's why we should play. got scolded very harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you I'm, okay, I'm, never crushed again. us. It was a massacre, Richard. It was like a you six did, card yeah. combo that needed like 30 mana or something. Everyone yeah. Was like, wow, he's he's broken used that. Like, yes, Dockside did that. I think so, he used uh, Necropotence no in, that, in that game, too, to find your, your, your jank. Oh, oh. Yeah, it was like a CDH deck. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, like a CDH, CDH deck, deck, but it was like we were a, playing oh, like Theme Week. Like it's not Oracle. Right? It's it's not not CDH you guys forgot about Necropotence. I'm like, yeah, we did forget about Necropotence in whatever podcast we did the week before. So I played Necro. I'm like, yeah, never again. God. <laughs> like, okay, maybe, maybe maybe Crim's right. Maybe it's a little bit too spicy, but I want to see it. At least for one game. Like like Doc's side, we can just agree is broken no matter what. It doesn't it doesn't need anything. It just does broken things. So number two, like, Jessica's more will. Is really good. You get a huge burst in mana, and when there's players like me who are like like slow and dirty when it comes to their deck, and has like fifty cards in their hand at a time, you love that player, right? Like, cause like I can't cast any of my spells, so I'm clearly not doing anything. So why not net seven mana? And then if you have your commander, you get both. Oh, this is so good. Man, this man is and better. cards. That's man and cards. Right? That's what Commander's about. Like, you want cards and you want mana, and Jessica's Will just does them both but, very but, efficiently. But Gamble gets you the Jessica's Will. No, you then discard you it. <laughs> this is why you yeah. don't run it. Garbage, <laughs> trash. Then you use number four card, Underworld Breach or something, and you fetch it back out. <laughs> yes, uh, that's why I put it in my graveyard deck, so I'll be like, okay, fine, I'm going to discard the card. I, it's an Entomb, all right? It's an Entomb. Just a fancy-looking Entomb. Jessica's, yeah, fine. yeah, Gamble is not a tutor. It is an Entomb. Uh, it is. It's, it's not demonic tutoring. It's tombing. I don't even care about the statistics. I know statistically it's good, well, right? But <laughs> is Curse of Opulence? Oh, oh my god! Here? Oh my god! I'm oh, putting is, that. Is high. Wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. I, I for, oh, how did I no. forget? All right, no, no. I put it higher than uh, just because no. Will. Okay, that, how did no. I forget? What? No, yeah, Curse of Opulence. Right, okay. Curse of Opulence. That's my hot take. 
I've been high on this card since it's since it got previewed. <laughs> And it Literally is never disappointed. It take, has never yeah. disappointed. Yeah. It's <laughs> turn one. Turn one <laughs> at least at least out it's like a basically the red wild growth plus plus plus. So first of all, it's making at least like one mana per turn if you're like in a creature deck. But then it also deters people from attacking you, so it saves you life and it forces people to attack the cursed opponent where they're going to take more damage. So you're dealing indirect damage that way. Plus, you're generating more gold. So you could instead of just generating like one gold per per turn you're generating possibly two or even more gold per turn cycle and you're def- you're, you're avoiding damage to yourself so it's, it's gaining you life pass indirectly and it's dealing damage to a person you want to deal, deal damage and it's mana fixing it's mana fixing and right and it's an art of blah it's so good it's it's, it's n- so good it's not a bad card for sure better than just I think as well i think it's a good it's card pretty, it's a good 50 card. but but oh. why <laughs> wait for you to go around this whole cycle, play this politic game when you can just have that burst of mana right there, right then, One and drop. get your cards mana on fixing. top of that. You know, you're like, oh, I've got a bunch of extra mana this turn. Well, what if only I had something to do with it? Well, don't worry. Jessica's will will just get you something to do with it. Just so, like, you also make an me. enemy. You also yeah, kind of make yeah, an enemy if yeah. you just slam that on someone. Like, yes, yeah, two people are incentivized not to attack you, but one person has to try to kill you because they're going to die because you curse them. Oh, but now they have defenders, so what are they going to attack me with? They need to block, <laughs> don't they? They, they, may, bad, not. But, <laughs> like, they <laughs> may not. They may not. I feel it's like Ristic State where people know how to play this. When, when you slap down a curse, everyone knows not to just, like, pummel yeah. the cursed player. And I think the I think it's a top five or top ten. I don't know. It's up there somewhere. But I think it's an incredibly unfun card. So I, I, I think Ritz Exposed is an incredibly play. unfun card, but that's a losing battle for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, but it's unfun for the table, Tomer. This is unfun for a single person. <laughs> You're oh. like directing so the I, unfun to a single person. I actually have one other question for you. Yeah. What about deflecting SWAT? If the big argument for <laughs> Fierce Guardianship is like, I play my yeah. commander, it protects my commander for free, shouldn't this be like very very high on everyone's list who likes fierce guardianship that's number four for but, me that's 100 percent. that's it's it's wait, basically really? does it what yeah, it's so good it's, it's not, not as good top as 25 or something i don't i don't think i even play that card it's it, because it basically any targeted removal on you is a two for one now and it's, it has more flexibility than that. Sometimes, like people are like, target player draws X cards or whatever. You'd be like, I'm that player you to now. This thing called Swift Foot Boots. Now, no, <laughs> you can play this and slap it on your thing and be good. No, the problem with Swift Foot Boots is somebody's going to destroy the boots and then they're going to waste their removal on that thing. This one That's makes true. them use the removal a, from their hand. Gotcha. And, yeah. Oh, it's so good. And Bolt Bend. Bolt Bend is the runner up on that one, by the way. Bolt Bend. But Bolt Bend I mean, is deflecting is very is better. far. I mean, down, this is, this but is yeah, like playing yeah. blossoming defense or something. Like. It's not as good as fierce, <laughs> like, but it's like, like really very good. Like yes. you gotta wait for someone to try to remove your commander. No, and remove then you, anything. You no, it's if you remove anything on my board, then I just retarget it and I two for one you. I do like well, deflecting then you sit there very sad. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's, that's why it's worse than fierce. Fierce is so good because it deals with any problem that your board is going to deal uh, have to deal with essentially, except for creatures. But they're usually just instant sorcerers. This one though, it's more narrow. But when it works, oh, 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 the dopamine rush of being like, actually, that that uh, generous gift. Now it's it's hitting your your one black source of mana. Uh, goodbye, your Orborg or whatever, and that's it. That's so good. Oh. I I do I do like it. It is a good card. I don't know if it's a top five card, but I definitely do think that deflecting swat's good. Fierce guardianship is just so powerful as a counter spell. So there is a difference there because it is there's def- like there's whatever there's a uh, uh, fierce guardianship and then there's the like a huge gap until you hit the next batch of free sure. spells and then there's the fog. Like, I think I think <laughs> the fog swat's number the two. One. Like you get to protect your whole team if that's what you're after, except for like exile effects. I I. I do think deflecting SWAT number two over like flawless yeah. maneuver. Yeah, because it's, it's even counter magic protection. If somebody tries to counter your spell, you're just like, I guess that's no. fair. That's fair. But it is a good card, so I'm not going to argue that. But there's no way that if you're looking at the top two cards, that deflecting SWAT, Curse of Opulence is better than Dockside or Jessica's Will. Those are just now like the, you're playing a red deck. You're <laughs> probably starting with those two, and then you go and then you work your way back. I think Curse is much better. I would say Just Justice Will is 
tremendously worse in like a five color deck, for example. Whereas Curse, I run it in my in my five color decks. Why not? If mana fixes for me, it's so good. Whereas Jessica's right. Will, what am I going to do with all that five red sources? I'm like, I need green and white and stuff. It's like, blah. So, so EDH rec has Chaos Warp Blasphemous Act. We forgot about Chaos Warp. Oh, okay. that's, that's, it should be up there. I think it, it suffers from the beast with the generous. Like there, there's similar no. It's worse than colors. that. It's worse than that because you always Is they it, always hit like Emrakul or something. So it, it actually deals with indestructible things and stuff like that. There's oblation in white as well. Um, it's in yeah, the same I, tier. I think Chaos Warp deserves to be up there somewhere, top yeah, ten at with, least. Yeah, it's but up there it with Beast Within and uh yeah. yeah, the other similar versions. It's it's the red version of that. It's a little bit yeah, worse the because you can RNG is much into worse. A yeah. good thing. Well but Whereas... they can also RNG into nothing. Yes. Like so yeah. you get uh, with Beast Within you guarantee a three three. With Chaos Warp, it lives up to its name. Like it can be nothing, it could be really bad. It's like statistically though, every single time I cast it, you get like the best thing in your deck. I'm like <laughs> Tomer just should not play you red decks. He can't for gamble because he discards his best thing. Have to move some mediocre thing that can spin into the best thing. <laughs> I have to play red. How else am I going to play Curse of Opulence when I'm like that? <laughs> All right, mean? our most controversial color is green. Oh yeah. I have never. This is like a top ten list by itself or something. We have so many different options here. Uh, I have Nature's Lore at one, Cultivate at two, Seth has Eternal Witness at one, Great Henge at two. Wow. Tomer has Finale of Devastation at one, yeah. Survival of the Fittest at two, Krim has Sylvan Library at one, Eternal Witness at two. So Eternal wow. Witness is the only repeatable, hey. repeating card here, which is weird. Yeah. I don't think that's even the best card of that effect. Skullwinder would like to say hello. Skullwinder oh. is, is <laughs> okay. true. If I agree All right, with that. Okay, 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 wait. No, is no, nature's no, no. lore not actually just the best card in magic like period like if i had to choose one card in all of magic it might actually be nature's lore slash three visits so, to the same cards over ristic <laughs> studies yes oh, oh, i mean it's it's a no. fine it's a, no it's not the best no. card in magic. like mana here's a, no, no, not the here's best even top card? 10 no you guys know no. how to two mana no, no. like right. i mean it's you you take five, three maybe? visits over a mana crypt like i don't understand okay, okay. Okay, so Soul Ring Mana Crypt might have a special place above that, but outside of those, Nature's Lore is above everything else. I would take a Birds of Paradise over a Nature's Lore. Whoa! Whoa. No, 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 no. Yeah! No, no, no. That's, that's like a promo secret layer limited edition print wow. run. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's like Richard's Iconic Rift Take level. That's, wow. Um I don't know about that. That's still pretty so, hot. <laughs> here's, here's the issue I have with the Green Ram spells. There's a million of them that are all very good. Uh, so I, I can't put them highly on my list. It is a group. They're the most powerful thing that Green does. But as mm-hmm. far as individual cards, Nature's Lore, Farseek, Secure Tribe Elder, Rampant Growth. Sure, Nature's Lore is like... It is technically you, you the best of far. those. You can't be like, I, Sol Ring is not powerful because Mana Crypt exists, so I'll just remove this group <laughs> altogether. <laughs> like, it is the, the most drop powerful is thing just, that Green does, right? Uh, no? The drop is just like not fair. It is, ramping is the most powerful thing that Green does. Then Rampant Growth should be top five, right? Like number one, Nature's Lore. Number two, Three Visits. Number three, Rampant Growth. Number four, Far Seek. Number five, like, it should be like that, right? In, in actuality, right? Nah. <clears throat> I, it... I want my... Uh, Ah, I want my cards to do something that's less replaceable. Like I, I think that's what I okay, okay. that's what Wait, I value in a list own, like this. Like, like four green cards. What would they be? Ooh. Like so you you can't just like willy nilly sub in random budgets. Like you just have four cards, period, right? Like wouldn't nature's lore be one of them? No. Three visits, still... maybe. <laughs> but not nature. Also, story. why why cultivate over Kodama's Breach Treasure? Come on, are, are, are they actually you're, different? I assume you're exactly snubbing exactly the arcane. Different. They are the same. No, it's you can splice onto Kodama's Breach. Richard. When was the last time you saw anybody happened. splice anything? Yeah, like I, I literally have a Kalamax arcane he deck. Has a spirit <laughs> arcane deck. Or whatever. I do. Tomer, Tomer's like the one person on Earth that's used splice and arcane. It's highly relevant. Maybe this is, like, black in Tomer's list, and Richard is, like, objectively right, but it's just so boring. I can't bring myself to (laughs) to list off 10 green ram spells. You can't just omit the whole class if you don't want to put, like, top five, just literally all green ram. (laughs) Well, okay, well, what about, like, 
What about like survival of the fittest? That card is like so good that we don't. It is. I really feel like good. that's almost like Necropotence level where. I yeah. mean, like it's yeah. good, early but on, it's more like specific deck good, right? It's a green deck, so it's creatures. I mean, either I you're know. in green or either creatures or your lands. Basically, well, no, you could be a four color deck with green in it, sure. but not like primarily. Do you creature do you play that? Yeah. Uh, even if you're just a creature deck, though, if you're just do you just yolo it and you're like, well, discard something and get something that's slightly bad. I don't. When I think nah. of survival, I think of like really good in like madness, or reanimator, like graveyard synergies. I don't know if I think of it as like generically every green deck I play would jam it just so I so can like if, if you play upgrade. wood elves and stuff like that or uh, like sack of a tribe elder like birds yeah. of paradise birds right, of paradise that makes... like that's fodder <laughs> you can replace with like your bombs if you need to right I honestly think finale of devastation is better than survival of the fittest in most of my casual decks like I do it, not it's... I... but you don't like it I I don't think it's as good as it it makes it like see necropotence is will will do something like this I don't know. This just isn't enough. You're you're, you're I mean, is finale even the best card of that type. You have I think cord, so. You have green sun zenith. Green sun's only cord. gets green creatures. This one gets it from gets any creature, and it can come get it from the graveyard, yeah. and it just doubles as a finisher. If you pay like spend you ten or more, two. your creatures yeah. get plus X plus X and haste until end of turn. So you grab whatever you need, and then your entire board, including the thing you got gets 10 plus 10 plus 10 in haste at a minimum so it's really good and if that thing is in your graveyard then it acts as a as a regrowth or whatever too so it is it is <laughs> really good i have good. a hard time thinking of it as the number one overall green card but it is i initially had crater hoof on my list but finale was kind of the card that made me not want to have it on my list because i felt like finale can fill that same role and offers flexibility. So uh, they're probably both together, like a little bit outside of my top two somewhere. In the top ten for sure, though. I'm surprised that Eternal Witness yeah, showed Eternal up Witness in both blows Prim my and Sup. I want to hear really about that. Car- three good. mana, like just regrowth with the body. Is that really uh, a top ten? It's not even as good as Skullwinder, though. I don't understand. <laughs> I think because I think, it is on a body uh, that's huge, right? Because then it regrowth. I have to do some weird stuff in green to get that back, like back, right? But like Balaged Recovery, Eternal Witness. These are all things that are easily, like you know, like. Specifically, Ewit, you can flicker, you can reanimate, and usually it chains into getting it back and, like, cording into it instant speed. Like, there's a lot you can yeah, do with Ewit because it's a creature. You so, can finale into it. Yeah, you can finale into it <laughs> if you wanted to. And, and like, yeah, like, it's – the versatility in it being a creature is amazing. So, I don't know. I, I just don't see how this card is bad. When I even, – even of the green cards, and I, I despise most of them, I still love Ewit. Like, Ewit is a – good magic card and it just gets whatever i need and it, it being a creature is actually a huge upside so but okay this wait. one's for seth so he, he he like discounted nature's lore because of the whole swath but here you have skull winder you have timeless witness you have like green warden you have balagan recovery you have literal <laughs> regrowth like green <laughs> half of green stars so, do this okay <laughs> okay so cross any cross any non-creatures off the list because okay, it's just really okay. not the same once you get past the non-creatures, there's really not that many. Like, four, maybe? So I guess that I guess that's a reasonable number. Skullwinder, have you ever actually played that card outside of Commander Clash? I'm curious. I think it works really well when you know all of your opponents, and you know you can browbeat someone or manipulate them into doing what you want. I wonder if that works as well if you're playing in a random pod with strangers. Like, are you going to be able to do the same politicking to make that work out and make it better than Eternal Witness? I'm yes. not really convinced of that. And that I, I play with and two then Green different commanders. Mana, they would be like, "Hey, target you, and you take the land, extent. okay?" They're like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> like if there's like if you actually like that's the floor, right? You can just be yeah. like, "Who who who agrees to take like this basic land out of their deck or something, right?" And people will will definitely do it. And that's like the floor, right? The the best is like take the wrath, you cast the wrath. Now Skullwinder's like three mana plus gain eight free mana and undo inversion, <laughs> right? <laughs> like. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's uh, okay, but that's a let's fair argument. Lie, like, is it Timeless Witness better for four mana, but it has flashback seven? I think I like the three mana way more because, again, for those exact reasons, Green Sun, Tutors, and things like that, just not having to pay more mana and not that Green needs help paying less mana. Uh, like, I, I think that it's big. It's big. That, although I do like that Timeless Witness has flashback. 
or whatever, mm. or eternalize. Isn't it like seven? Eternalize, yeah. It's like a lot. Yeah, yeah. It is I, like I seven like to part. eternalize. Oh, I mean, God, I think, yeah. I like the efficiency too. One of the things that Eternal Witness style cards do that we see with like people playing pull from eternity and stuff is like your combo piece gets dealt with and you want to be able to get back that piece from the graveyard and like reassemble the thing you're doing. In situations like that, I think efficiency is like pretty valuable to be able to like hopefully get back your card and execute your game plan in the same turn. So I I don't know. Maybe I maybe it's just my bias for Eternal Witness. I'm curious about Sylvan Library. That's a card okay. that I, I used to play in every battle. deck. Is is Sylvan Library still good in 2023? I feel like that's one of those cards that was since Wizards has fixed green, quote unquote, and green has like Return of the Wild Speaker and so much card draw that unless I'm an Enchantress deck, I really don't play Sylvan Library hardly at all anymore. I mean, I I think this card is absolutely correct. I mean, even if it's not CDH or whatever, like this card just you get to do everything you just mentioned since Wizards fixed green. But you get to do it earlier on the curve without mm-hmm. anything. I don't need a big creature. I don't have to worry about that. I just get to draw cards. And when you're in the color that is primed to take advantage of its excess, like you're looking for something to do with all of its excess resources, right? With ramping and stuff like that, you're getting a deep look into the deck at least. And if you're if you're like a if you're full on esports mode and want to lean forward in your chair, you just take eight every time. You don't even look. <laughs> like so yeah. do you take eight so I don't so back in the day Seth would just take eight every single every time. Every time. Like, go, yeah, go, I go. I mean, pay yeah. off and like I know it's it's much better in CDH where like sure. you wanna you wanna drop this on the first turn and then you start getting immediate value out of it and you can take eight because the game is going to be ending pretty soon, right? And then it's but, like pay two, draw draw two each turn. But even better than that, it works very well with fetch lands. Like if you're running a bunch of fetches, if you're like in a multicolor deck, then you don't even need to take all the cards. You can take the like one or even two best cards from the top of your library. It's basically like a sensei's top that draws you even more cards. And then yeah. if yeah. you don't need the cards, and you can be like, all right, I crack my fetch, fetch afterwards, uh, and then I'm fine. The old Jace the Mind Sculptor fetch lane. Yeah, it's it's like I the green Jace too. the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> I, this card I am more just, than. It's, <laughs> it's so cheap. It's two mana. It's yeah. so efficient. It's, it's an so... enchantment, so it's just it's hard to get rid of. It's very reliable. I'm more like than it. willing to pay life for cards. I've killed myself with greaves <laughs> in Sylvan Libraries more than anyone, I think, on Commander Clash. <laughs> but why would I pay life for cards if I don't need to? And I just feel like I don't need to anymore. I feel like with all the like uh, Guardian projects and great engines, yes, it's only two mana, but I don't know. I just I don't play it anymore. I feel like it's just been kind of power crept out of almost all my decks. In any like green I feel, I feel synergy deck, I don't rack. Mm. Like people used to be very desperate to like dig deep and stuff, but now you're like, I'll just play Toski and draw everything. Like who cares, <laughs> right? Or uh, Great Henge, like we have on the list. Like, there's just so much random card draw now that yeah. you don't I mean, really not... need to do this outside of CDH, right? Because CDH, you need efficiency, and life doesn't matter because you're not getting attacked down, right? And you're less heavy I'm... on, like, big, big synergy. Like, if I'm in a creature focus, like, I'm not running Sylvan Library because I just have, like, I have Toski, I have uh, in Return of the Wild Speaker, I have, like, the Hunter's Insight and, and whatnot. Like, there's so but many, a billion rely... different ways. But you rely on having your creatures. Grim is the one person that plays yeah. green without creatures, so he's like Sylvan yeah. Library. Oh, he's playing green <laughs> yeah, control. Yeah, I guess that makes... <laughs> well, but, like, like, yeah, of course, obviously. I mean, I don't I don't need to... I don't really even need to play green, to be honest with you, to do it. I mean, like, <laughs> throw in, though. Dude, Sylvan Library is just efficient. Like, yeah. I, I just don't understand how this isn't good. Like, it may not be the big draw 50 with, like, whatever the the... Whatever that hunts the huntsman thingy spell from Eldrain that pumps and also draws equal to greatest power and fights uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be a big draw spell like that, but over time, yeah, maybe you wither your health down, but you may also be scrying or you're essentially uh, getting rid of the excess cards you don't need. Just draw it, get to the next part of your deck. You're digging, you're digging. Or like Tomer said, you can also shuffle things back in if you need. Like th- there's just a lot of flexibility and versatility in what this can do for two mana that I just find that there is not another card like that could just even be remotely as close as to efficient as this. You're talking right, about you five me. mana instant <laughs> that relies you to have a creature. Eh, this is just me. two mana That's good. to do whatever at whenever, however you want. Okay. That's We're good. ignoring you're, the you're life, It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Great Henge is the other thing here. Seth has it up here. Seth puts Great Henge above Sylvan Library. 
Oh, by uh, very far above Sylvan Library for me personally. Uh, Greyhenge is the first guy I put out all my green decks. Yes, you got to have a big creature, but that's kind of what green does. And then, again, like, I think the most powerful things you do in Commander, draw cards and make mana. This does literally both of those things, and it gives you some plus one, plus one counters as a benefit. It, like, even, like, buffs your creatures as just a little bonus. So I think Greyhenge is, like, and it ramps uh, into number life. two. Number two on the on the list, the number two green card. I think it's the best card at what this effect does. Like, if you compare it to, like, Guardian Project, uh, Beast Whisper, I guess, yeah, basically anything that's, like, non-token synergy creatures on the battlefield. But the reason why I knock it down, though, is that I feel it's even more specific because you can't go in, like, it doesn't go well in, like, uh, a token deck, for example, because it doesn't draw off. Uh, well, it it doesn't draw off uh, non-token of, or uh, tokens, of token yeah. creatures. And then if you're playing just like a bunch of ones, one ones and two twos, then you still have to pay like seven mana for it or something. I, I don't know. It's very, like if you're playing a big Timmy deck, I think this yeah. is one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah, it's but so good. you may not be <laughs> right. Like you may be a four color green deck that's just chock full of like ramp and other stuff, and you're you're not gonna have a yeah. big enough creature to get this great henge to be useful. But you would still play things like Eternal Witness, Sylvan Library, Nature's yeah. Lore, blah, 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 right? All right. So I the think most it's popular... really good in the Timmy archetypes, but yeah. outside of them... The most popular green right. decks right now are Atraxa and Lathril. <laughs> I don't think... The Great Hands is amazing, but I don't know if they'd be that great in either of those decks. You convinced me. I, I went boring. Uh, I Nature's, right Lore, Nature's Lore 3 visits. Nature's Lore 3 visits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I tried to be spicy, but you, you are right. Okay. Those cards okay. are the best. Okay, <laughs> spicy, okay. okay. something went horribly wrong in Colorless. Okay, and I'll, I'll, let me explain to you. Tumor's I put trolling. Soul Ring as one. I put Dust and Daggers two because I forgot about Mana Crypt. Okay, <laughs> now the, the the real answer would be one Soul Ring, two Mana Crypt, three Dousing Dagger. Wow. Now the okay, rest of y'all saw okay. my answer and thought this was a meme category because we <laughs> yeah. got Tomer. Whoa, whoa, whoa! With double Cauldron pieces <laughs> here. <laughs> Crim with tell Mana Crypt, right Sword of Body and Mind. <laughs> Y'all is sleeping on Cauldron, let me tell you. Seth with Soul Ring, Mana Crypt. Um, I have had Sword of Body and Mind on here, okay? And it's not a meme. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, it, it, Mana Crypt is above Soul Ring, right? It's just a better Soul Ring, no? Or, or yeah, Soul 100%. Ring? It's better than Soul Ring. Mana Crypt better? Yeah. No. 100%. It's, I mean, it, it's zero mana, right? It's zero mana versus nothing. one mana. It's like That's it's true, better. but it's three, potentially three life. At, like, we've definitely seen people take 20 life over the course of a game Heads always off wins. of Mana Crypt. Like, oh, some people just don't lose the die roll. <sighs> <laughs> on turn one, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think Sol Ring's better Forehead. personally. Seth, like, Seth, I, think, I feel like you're the one person that would love. You can have on, a Seth. three How? drop no, no. on turn one with uh, sort of body in mind. No, 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 no. The, the yeah, turn you could no, turn gonna... one sort of body in mind. No, like, yeah, like, with Mana Crypt, you could turn one. Wait, you can't you could do turn that with Helm of Cauldra. What? I have to wait until turn two to Helm of Cauldra with my Sol Ring? Trash. Yeah, that's garbage. ridiculous. Ridiculous. But I, I mean, garbage. legitimately, Unplayable. Seth, you get to play a mini game. I know you love your your die rolls and your coin flips. So, how do you not like mana mana crypt? It's perfect. Well, I'm, I mean, I have it as the number two best card in colorless. Actually, I would say these are the two best cards in Commander. Period. Like, if we're doing an overall list, regardless of colors, those would be one and two. I think the life matters. Like, I think it does. Like, sure, you get a little bit more explosiveness out of Mana Crypt for one turn. But after that one turn, they're the same card. They both make two mana, except every single turn. I'm losing, what, 1.5 life a turn, like, uh, on average. That's That adds up over the course of 10. Like, games, our games go, what, 11 turns? You play this on turn zero, 1.5. That's like 15 life. You're almost losing half of your life to this soul ring. Like... I don't think one turn of making one extra mana is... So if, I, if I told you, Seth, you could start at 15 less life, but you have two extra mana starting from turn zero, would you not snap take that like deal every single game? I would take that, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm not saying it's bad as my number two card, but would I take that deal or would I take the one extra turn mana okay, on the okay, first turn right, and two right. for every other yeah. turn? It would be I would choose yeah. a soul ring deal if I had to make that choice. Okay, but I, so I think the biggest factor here is actually the wallet, right? So soul ring is essentially free; everyone has one. Yeah. Mana crypt is a ton of money, which is a lot of people approaching two hundred dollars. Yeah, but like okay. That, it, so memes aside, okay, one, two, crypt soul ring. What's number three? 
Wait, 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 wait. Are you are you just skipping over sword of body and mind? Are you are you, are you saying skipping you know, over Crypt is one and then two is sword of body and mind There's, and three is soul and ring? then soul ring. Crim's not really saying that. Crim is You're not saying. Farming Crim the is definitely yes. Soul ring. <laughs> I mean, no, sorry, man of Crim. That cyclonic rip isn't even good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I that's why true. Can't, about that. Right? <laughs> why can't I just say sort of body and mind is better than soul ring? You should say it. It's definitely <laughs> in the top fact, of, is, but, of the sword. You know what? Ranking. Sword of body. Soul ring doesn't give me a two two body. It's definitely in the sword a, ranking boy. for sure. It would. This wouldn't even be top two in a ranking of swords. <laughs> but it would be it would be in a sword ranking, would it not? It would technically, yes. If we ranked all the swords, it would be it in too. all. I think it, it would drop sword of body Dude, people, and mind. Do, people do not respect Sword of Cauldron right now, by the way. First of all, oh, if, oh, you, Tomer, if please, you put... Sit down. If you, <laughs> nobody respects Sword of Body in mind, except... Bill, who killed it immediately, so that just confirmed it's an Avengers level threat. Just saying, Look, last just imagine, imagine this: you, you equip up. a creature with Sword of Culture, okay, and then you Chandra's, you cast Chandra's Ignition on the creature that has Sword of Culture on it. All the creatures, even if you equipped it to like a one one or whatever. Tober, Tober, wait, I, what is what does Sword of Culture do? Can you read the text for people who may not be familiar with it? Such as I, I. mean, we didn't read the text for any of all, all the other staples, but yeah, the, we, I guess yeah. just to refresh you, <laughs> slowly. Uh, a four mana legendary artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus size plus five, and whenever a quick creature deals damage to a creature, exile that creature and it has equipped four. Okay, so that's a nine mana combo to build a wrath, essentially. <laughs> but it exiles. <laughs> it. It's a, it's it, it gets around <laughs> indestructible. You have like if somebody has like uh, what's it called, blight steel colossus or a dark steel colossus, they can't block. It's gone. Never, the creature dies. Mm-hmm. Never seen a blight uh, okay, okay, so me, me up with aside, a three, that's I, legitimate. Wait, I actually, wait, hold yeah. on. The sort of body in mind mills people. Thank you. Like, <laughs> yes, you're right, Grim. It mills. And um, that you, is a fact, yes. You beat the stuffing out of your opponents. So the lore is that you hit them so hard, a wolf comes out of them. Yeah, but it's, the sort of culture beats the sort of body and mind in that duel. Dude, okay, yeah, so unless they're your both creature animated. that it's attached well, to is green or blue, I'm going right around that though, right? All right, so, all right, so uh, all right, enough, <laughs> enough of this sword talk. Memes, memes aside, I think it's actually no interesting. Uh, okay, uh, swords aside, I actually <laughs> think you. that there's an interesting conversation about what's number two or number three on the list. So. I think you can argue for Mana Vault was a card that I really like, but maybe I overrate really? it. I, I like think it. Swift Foot Boots and Lightning Greaves are in the conversation, and I think Skull Clamp is in the conversation. That that would be the the four cards I would you could argue in different directions. I would lean towards maybe Greaves, I guess, followed by like Boots and Skull Clamp, and then uh, Mana Vault in there somewhere. But I guess I go Greaves at three over uh, Jeweled Lotus. Oh Dual yeah, Dual Lotus, Lotus is number, number three for me. Yep. You can also uh, toss strong, a King's like Signet specific. in there. Yes, you, you can't. Ru- you have to run it in a deck that is like a three mana commander or more, and can utilize all three thingies, right? But don't you need the grief? Like, are you really just gonna naked throw out your commander to get swords to plowshare? Yeah, you got fierce <laughs> backup. You, I don't know. Don't you need the greaves or Richard? something like to, to help us along? No, you Reeves want fierce guardianship bring. in your hand uh, or a deflecting swat. <laughs> Richard speaks from experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I play Greaves and Boots in a lot of decks. I, I I have come around to just like almost always wanting them. Like you, kind of the same thing you talk about. Like you have a commander; it's really important to your game plan. This is like kind of the artifact version of fierce guardianship. Like this is a really good way to keep your most important thing on the battlefield, or at least help it stay on the battlefield. I think Greaves is on a different level boots... than Boots, though. Because, like, boots I, cost one or worse. to equip. And yeah, you can't and then the zero. Hexproof for again. Shroud, yeah. Like, it depends yeah. on if you're trying to, like, equip or, like, that's the... I'd say nine times out of ten, the Greaves is just way better. Because you could just, like, play... You could play, like, even, like, a Mana Dork and then equip yeah. the Greaves on it and immediately tap the Mana Dork thing. You can cast, like, a four drop on turn four, immediately equip it and attack. Like, boots has always been just inherently clunky to me. Uh, I think that's true. I, I would rank Greaves ahead of Boots, but I actually think it is somewhat like when I build a deck. There's sometimes I'm like, oh, I really can't play Greaves in this deck, so I'm gonna have to go with Boots instead. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. So like like uh, Greaves maybe narrowly passes, but like what would I? <laughs> don't play I still what? don't think Greaves and Boots is boots. over Jewel Lotus. What it, what do you have, Richard? What do you have at number three? So Krim has Jewel Lotus on there, which I, I can see an argument Dalsy for Dagger. Jewel Lotus. I also have Jewel Lotus at number Dagger. three. I think Jewel Lotus, meaning. I think, deserves a spot here. I don't think <sighs> so. Boots, I don't even play. I only play Boots or Greaves <laughs> in decks where I need the haste. Because <sighs> most of the time, yeah. your stuff's just getting wrathed away. Like, no yeah. one is bothering with spot removal, right? Like, Seth doesn't even run Swords to Plowshares. Why well, I'm protecting against nothing. Isn't. Yeah, right. I run it for Isn't, haste too. Like so if I, I don't I need, need haste, for haste I don't run if it. I need the haste, but yeah. as for general protection, like I don't even bother with it. So uh, I'd like, rather run SWAT. Question like, I'd run for SWAT none. or like some phase out spell or something. Like there's the the white uh, artifact that like phases the thing out. Uh, so I actually <laughs> really of don't stars. like. I don't like the boots that much. Dagger is insane. Everyone. I can't believe none of y'all like. <laughs> It's literally yeah. a tri land that comes down <laughs> that refunds itself, right? So, <laughs> like, so it's actually rest- crap. Richard, my my counter spell can't, Richard. It, it can't attack people. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> non Richard people is Dowsing yeah. Dagger just Richard's sort of body and mind? Like, is okay. this Richard's oh, no. or are we Why? taking this? Let's respect it like that. No, I think <laughs> Richard Dagger is really on. good. Don't dis. But... There are so many implications here that I'm trying to grasp right now. <laughs> a, what do you mean by that question, Seth? B, what do you mean by that, Richard? That don't do that to my things. What is going on here? <laughs> I'm, I mean, Dowsing Dagger is good, but you, you got to be playing a Richard deck, right? Like that's kind of the. The, you need the, an evasive creature. You, you like, should. You, you need make this incredible card so powerful. Like, you should be adding random dorks in just to enable this. It's like ancient tomb, right? Except it's three mana, has color, and it, it's like a built-in nature store. You like tutored it out and like threw it on the battlefield. Like it's a it's a rampant growth on top of that, right? Like you added a land. It's like actually so cracked that you should play just like like. Birds of Paradise, like, might actually be a legit argument to run Birds of Paradise just so you can equip the dagger and hit people, right, over over rampant growth, right? So I was there with you until you said dagger, and I thought you were talking about sort of body in mind. Because, yeah, <laughs> you get the bird down, and then you start attacking. Yo, no, nobody's blocking Turn if they're blue sword, and green. Okay? <laughs> you start making the wolves. You fill yeah. up the graveyard for the breach player, yep. okay? And the reanimation deck talk- is, like, really popping off. <laughs> Y'all just talked about you needing to play bodies. You know what makes bodies? You know what literally beats the wolf stuffing out of your opponent? Sort of body in mind. You get a body. You milt. <laughs> the value is endless. The value is endless. I'm sorry. It, it, and also, so- no, I don't think dagger is, is anywhere near as good. It's good. Don't get me wrong, Richard. I believe in the dagger since you've definitely – made me believe it after hitting all of us with it um <laughs> but better than the like like jeweled lotuses and 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 the stuff like that like okay let's just scrap it's the close. fast mana because like fast mana is obviously busted what about the right? other fast mana like uh mox I, I amber all... mox diamond nah eh, those all come with enough downsides that like i think the best one is the metalcraft one because yeah, it's cr- really uh, easy Chromox, to turn on. Or but anything Opal. where it's like you have to two for one yourself, or you have to even have to have like a legendary creature on the battlefield, like it's just yeah. kind of clunky. And like it's it's they're very good in the right decks, obviously. And in CDH, you're going to be running you know the Chrome Moxes and stuff. But like in a casual deck, I don't want to just two for one myself to put a, a zero it, drop it, lane, it, ramp if, or something. If we remove we the 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 mana rocks, the fast mana, I think Phyrexian Altar is still above that. Because Phyrexian wow. Altar is a is a free sack outlet. Free sack outlets are busted, what? and on top of that, it adds a mana of any color, or or astronauts, whatever. The burst in mana in decks that can really abuse that. Like I think that those cards are really good. Like uh, that's oh, actually a it'd be sack or staple and we're then, combo staple, but I think we're coming around to like the like cards that are the best card in like a small number of decks versus yeah, cards true. that are that's good true. in a lot yeah, of these decks. Are the so like overall. Alter and they're busted, but you really, it's really only for certain decks, I think. Yeah. Whereas yeah, back to like Tomer's point, like I don't think we need to play bad mana rocks that like two for one yourself because we have so many good ones. Like Hedron Archive, for example, we haven't even talked <laughs> yep. about that. Like why two for one yourself when your mana rock can be a two for one in your favor? 
Uh, but anyway, we're That's true. off track. I thought <laughs> you were going true. to try and defend that that garbage also, three drop, uh, lose two life, draw two cards thingy that you were very hot on. Also, where's oh, Panharmonicons? No one's got Panharmonicon on their list? Come on. Oh, wow. On, yeah, that's actually interesting. No Panharmonicons. I think Panharmonicons could have been outdated, though. We have now yeah. Elish Norn, so. I completely Old forgot news. that Seth was advocating for that mana rock that, like, hits you for two and draws you some cards. Whatever it was. from Brian Even worse than Hedron Archive. What, what is it? That's a, that was a... I, yeah, well, right. Yes, I've... Seth, what is it? I don't remember the <laughs> well, name of why it. Why don't you know the name of your favorite card, Seth? <laughs> yes, your Seth, favorite, hmm, favorite card from Jumpstart. What was it again? Oh, there it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. One question. Skull Clam. That's like, I think if we didn't mention it here... I think the comment section would mention it. What do y'all think about Skull Clamp in the year of 2023? It's okay. Great it's for decent. certain decks. Yeah, yeah. it's really good yeah, in the decks. decks that use Skull Clamp. So before, I used to put it in everything. Like literally yeah. any white deck, yep. you would slap it in, even if you couldn't clamp something to draw immediately because you were so desperate Avenge. for card draw. <laughs> You're like, I'll, I'll just chump block. Can you attack me, please? <laughs> yeah. And then I'll draw, right? But or I hope somebody now, wipes the board. <laughs> you really need to pop off and like clamp four things in succession and draw eight cards, and then it's insane. Yeah. But outside of those kind of decks, like I don't think you really need it. So I wouldn't put it as an ultra staple it would just be really good in clampable decks it's like the artifact version of sylvan library <laughs> like it used to play in every deck because i had to but now like i don't have to in as many decks so i only play it in certain decks i think it's 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 the sylvan library you could put in any deck and it'll be fine but this one i don't think it's that good and if you just jam it in any deck like yeah eventually your creatures will die but like i will only put it in like sacrifice decks and token decks that's it yeah it's about where I'm at. All right. Uh, EDH Rec has Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. Makes sense. So, Arcane budget. Signet is just in every product. So, again, makes sense. If you think, if, if Mana Crypt was like as cheap as Soul Ring, do you think people would play it as much? Or do you think people would be like, yes. ew, three yes. life oh, loss, yeah. bad? They would definitely play no, it. One and would. two. Oh, yes. <laughs> One yeah. They definitely yes. would. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want a second Soul, or I guess in this case, a second Mana Crypt? Right, because Sol Ring is yeah. the second mana crypt, and and yeah, like I I'm totally here for that. I, I don't know, I, man. Demonic Tutor or Vampiric Tutor is top two for black, but then Swords and, and Path is top two for white, and Smothering Tides is nowhere to be found. I don't know. <laughs> Demonic I mean, Tutor is like twenty dollars. Mana, mana crypt is two hundred. Yeah, like, mana like, crypt is like <laughs> yeah, in a league of its own when it comes to how much it costs. It's kind of ridiculous. It's good for the format, though. All right, last category: non color fixing lands. Uh, so I, I, I didn't want y'all to choose fetch lands and, <laughs> and shock lands and AB, ABU duels. So uh, non-color producing lands, I have Field of the Dead and Maze of It. Seth has Urza Saga, Boseju. It's a little cheaty. Tomer has Gaia's Cradle, Ancient Tomb. Krim has Ancient Tomb, Urza Saga. So two sagas, two Ancient Tombs, and then some other stuff. So I mean, Urza Saga, yeah. we like you. You fetch your soul ring out. Urza I mean, Saga's you're yeah, yeah it's so or, think, a, or a commander's yeah. plate, or or whatever you need, right? Like like that is. There's a lot of good one man artifacts, but yeah, probably soul ring. It's if build, we're granting the soul ring a mana too. crypt, yeah, or the two best cards in the format, then this just finds your two best card and does other stuff and has extra flexibility, like Herm was talking about. So yeah, the card is so, really so the I only reason we don't that. see it more. But oh, th there's a downside, right? You lose the land and you replace it with a soul ring that gets mm -hmm. blown up by the farewell, right? Like that. That's a real downside. So I, I only use Saga when a I'm trying to tutor like something not soul ring, like maybe a shadow spear or something. I'm an equipment deck or something like that, or I have a use for the uh, the constructs, the constructs that come out. Um, but constructs just randomly can win you the game. You play like two mana. Uh, two mana rocks or something constructs and you're just hitting people with like six sixes or seven sevens uh, but i i don't like the line of just putting it in and replacing it with a soul ring like that's an easy way to mm. die to that undo inversion or, or whatever that's coming down the pipe uh so i, I don't like getting a but soul the ring fact that it. you have the option to make mm -hmm. that misplay of just replacing the, like a land with it so that it could be a soul ring yada 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 shows you that urza saga has a lot of flexibility Urza yeah. Saga allows you to do whatever yeah. you need it to do, and whether it be a Soul Ring or a, 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 a Shadow Spear or whatever, or the beatdown that you need, it kind of just right there in itself explains why it's so dang good. 
because it I, does constructs, all of that. Yeah. The constructs are so ridiculous. We've seen them often be like 5'5", five, 10'10", five, ten, ten, sometimes bigger than that. So I think the, the upside of just making two of those potentially and tutoring up, that makes up for the downside of getting blown out by a farewell or whatever. I also think yeah. like you need to like... I mean, this goes right along with Richard and Krim, but you need to have more than one target for this too, because like even if like you're going to be grabbing Sol Ring 99% of the time or whatever, like if you draw that Sol Ring and you have no other targets in your library, then you just like strip mine yourself. Like it's not that's not good. So you should have like two, three targets, and then it's very good. I think. Well, I mean, you still made some constructs. Two. So, I mean, so yeah. sad. You, you didn't like the the chance of losing life with a man of Crims. How do we like guarantee two damage every turn? We play games where Crims at like eighteen life. No one's touched him because he's just been ancient tombing the whole time. And then people are like, "I'm going to attack the highest." It, it's insidiously good because people are like, "I'm going to attack the highest life total," right? Yeah. Because they're they're too cowardly yeah. to choose slide to right choose another one. And then like, I've seen it so many times where it's like Crim or something like, or me even like I'll play ancient tomb too when I'm not playing budget. And, like, I'll be at, like, 20 or something because I've inflicted 10 damage to myself. And people are like, oh, well, let's, this person's at 35. We should hit him instead. It's like, okay, cool. Great. It Let helps you double fly my under the radar. It, it's it's like you Ancient Tomb is a hidden fog, all right? Because it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm at the, yo, you got to get the highest life total. Dude. You can't hit me. <laughs> I think this card is, like, just better than the dude, this Urza Saga two mana and Ring. Fogs. I'm just saying it does. Yeah, it does. This card is Tomer insane. is the telling the truth right there. Because I turn one, you, you drop a two drop. And then turn yeah, like you're, you're, yeah. it, 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 you it unlike Urza Saga where you have to wait three turns or whatever, two turns. Like this one is just it starts soul ringing and it doesn't get farewelled or anything. Yeah, you lose life, but like okay. Greatness at Great. any cost. Well, it's also colorless cost. too, yeah. right? So it's you, also colorless. Yeah. It, it's not fixing and you know, it's not even a single color. So well, you can't get no, off. So. It's a but, weird hand yeah. where you have utility can, land, ancient tomb, and then you're like, wow, I have no colors in my four color deck. Or no, I'm just saying, deck. like, if, if you love Urza Saga because you can get a Sol Ring, I feel like this yeah. this card just does that line better. Like, yeah, I can't make corn stocks or whatever, but th- that turn you play it, it immediately starts making that two, two mana instead of one, which is like, oof. and. In yeah, Commander, really like, good. it's better than Temple of the False Gods, right? Because it's always online. But, uh, like, it, Temple's the, still good, the, the, uh, that's the obvious. But, like, on top of that, this just pays for attacks, right? Like, your Commander dies once. This is kind of like, all right, you're one time. Um, and on, and let's not lie here. The Burst in Mana is real nice. It lets you get set up way earlier than everybody else. And in the late game, you just get more out of your turns uh, because of this. And it's, it is colorless, so it's not broken. It's just good, it, but it, it is. It's like in every one of my mana bases. Yeah, I and think it's unlike top five or something, it's up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and unlike mana crypt, there's no soul ring to compete with. So I, I do, I do like Ancient Tomb a lot. There's the not like there's some pain free version. Oh, that doesn't even count as a card. <laughs> it's not that we did the math. I did the <laughs> okay, Boseju. Does this even count? Can I put this Andre version in here or good. like Balagan Recovery? It's like technically a land that's also a spell, but we have but other spells that are technically lands eh. too. It, the front <laughs> side is a lane, though. I don't know. It only has one side. There's actually okay. only one yeah. side, and that side yeah, is a never land. Mind. Yeah. I, I, is, I, is this I the only? Mind. Is this the only one? Like is, no, all the channel is lands. Otawaru, uh, all the channel Otawara lands. Otawara is really good. It. I yeah. think, oh, I think this one's gr- the best, though. Green Maybe number one, one, blue number two. And then the rest of that. Black is actually very good, too. Probably green, oh, blue, yeah, black, yeah. and then red and white and red at the bottom. I like red a decent amount in some decks. Like, I have it in my Brutal yeah. Cloud list, and it's like, oh, I, if I don't need the land drop, I just make two more tokens. And, uh, that's I relevant to me. you're playing a token deck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah if I'm playing a token deck. <laughs> but Egondra's the only one that's been, like, sitting in my hand where it's like, uh, four mana, to, and you got to attack. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's only three <laughs> mana, Talmer. Come on now. No, but four it's only damage, four I meant. damage. Four damage. So it doesn't get. It, like, it doesn't eh, get everything. Yeah, I have to wait for no. you to attack. I'm, 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 like, oh. I'm curious, Richard. Uh, if you're going to criticize Besaju, Mazabeth doesn't even tap for mana. Like, <laughs> Mazabeth is the only <laughs> card here that I'm like, I will not actually run it. I don't you run this Mazabeth card ever. Mazabeth is actually the most cracked card. You ask how what? Richard gets away without playing Source to Plowshares. You ask how he gets without playing any interaction. Because he's mana Mazavith. screwed. Because he's playing Maze of It. No, he's so like I can't play better. my I can't play my creatures. My my lanes don't tap for mana. 
You you play Yavamaya, <laughs> right? You play Orborg. It taps for mana, yeah. right? The, the the secret is in green decks, you can tutor this thing out. Like, yeah. do you know how gross it is if you tutor out a Yavamaya and a Maze of it? Like, you basically become untouchable, right? And you don't need to use removal. You don't even need to use Wraths if there's only, like, singular threats. You can just sit around and dirtle. And it's so good that I play the, uh, what is it? The Matic Artifact? Compass. Yeah. The, there's Ooh. a three-mana artifact that, like, searches yeah. your library for for a land and then when you have seven or eight or more lands it flips into a maze of it that taps for mana well, the like, compass is a truth though like I will know, run that that's like one of my top so hard for playing that for the longest time <laughs> you know, no you're three mana to get a swamp or whatever right like, no because you don't yes. you're not supposed to act like you can activate it but you don't have to you pay two mana yeah. and it's essentially it just flips itself you need like seven yeah. lands or something yeah. it yeah. flips yeah. itself and it becomes a land and it taps for mana and it's a maze of earth and it's yeah. it's like a two, colorless rampant growth kind of for like the mid game there's that one game where Phil was playing like some Voltron General Grievous <laughs> Or something, and I had yeah. like triple maze of it. I had. Well, you were also playing like mono green <laughs> fog. You were playing mono green fog, and he was not allowed to play the game because his deck was all about attacking. <laughs> but between that and like a single propaganda or something, like you're like untouchable. You can yeah. do whatever you want, right? So I I feel this is heavily underplayed. It used to be very expensive because it's from the dark or something, but it was reprinted. In, at Internal some point. masters, yeah. Uh, so I really like Maze of It. I think people should play Richard, it a lot more, especially in black, and definitely in green. Green's a free roll because you can you can ramp it out, uh, you can tutor it out. Also, you can tutor out the the land to make this into a real land as well. I, I feel like Richard, you you secretly or maybe not so secretly anymore, just like love Ixalan. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Richard is secretly a pirate or something yeah. in, in his off-screen time because you love Ixalan cards, dude, and like I despise Ixalan. Maybe because of my time in Standard, but like you love your flip cards in Ixalan. I think Richard is right. Richard's well, like Thematic Compass is fantastic. The green one, the three mana turns into a Gaius Cradle. The is it one yeah. that turns into Tolarian Academy? Like those cards are really good. I yeah, I don't know. Do you guys not like Feel the Dead? Does Feel the Dead make? I a love top Feel the five Dead. I just 10? I loathe it. I, lo- I yeah, I loathe it. I think that's I don't the play thing. it out of principle. I don't know, but I also don't I mean, think it's that good in all decks. Like if it's like in a monocolor deck, you really have to like adjust things. And if you don't, if you're not also in a green deck, I feel like it's really good in green decks because you can play multiple lands per turn, and that's really good. But like, if you just like make one zombie a turn, maybe, and sometimes you have like you need seven lands on the battlefield. So if you're like in blue or white or something, I don't know. Like you got at seven, or you can keep hitting your land drops and stuff. Like I don't know. Eh. I, it's, I, I it's think, really good. I think it's really good, but I I just don't think it's better than Urza's Saga or Ancient Tomb. And nobody right. has to get cradle. Right. What, what, what's five. everybody's? What's what's happening here? Nobody. I'm the C- only cradle one who mentioned good in cradle. Like one deck. And then yeah. Yeah. creatures not useful in every other deck. <laughs> like elf ball. Right? Like Green elf decks that have not, not, just, not just, just any creature deck. It has to be yes. like elf ball, right? Dude, if I have two creatures on the battlefield, two, just two, it's it's a better ancient tomb. Yeah, but, but if you have zero rash, creatures on the you, battlefield, then you, play a play a creature like your commander, like and now it's one like land, you have that forest and like nature's lore, and you're like so sad. Mulligan <laughs> right. it, it's fine. I mean, it, it cradle's definitely busted, but I think like uh, it does have a low floor. Like it's not yeah. always good. You really gotta you gotta have it in the right deck. I think it's but, hard to find the right decks for it. Yeah, it's it's either good or it's insane. I think that's those are the two what, modes what? that I it's see. Either insane with it. I, I, or like literal or, garbage. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah like right. all right, all right, Mister Maze of Vith in my top two. Oh, I just need to find my Yavamaya or Urborg so it can tap for mana. All right, sometimes this is the cradle like, this is so good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Although I like I, I like I, my lands tapping for eight mana casually in my green that, that deck. That is very right? good in Elf Ball, yeah. right? But like, are you really gonna run Cradle? Like, of all your decks, how many decks could you put Cradle in that contained green mana? All of them? Okay, not my really. Hilar you deck. would not my Halar deck, but I think all of the other ones. Yes, if I have like fifteen creatures in my deck, I'm I think Cradle is like insane. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe twelve is right. You have one creature. All you need is you one have creature. one in your command you zone at all times. Right. You need a right. second. Cre- you need two creatures. Two creatures, and the cards cracked. Anything more than that is like you're winning the game because you're gonna dump all that into a crater hoof or whatever. Or your finale of devastation. But two you creatures that you play. You play the cradle, and everyone will kill you. So you actually need to do something cracked. Yeah, yeah, you're playing you're just cradle. Play one creature and tapping as as if it's an ancient tomb. You're gonna lose like twenty life for that, like two mana, right? <laughs> okay, but you can say that about like ninety percent of the cards we're saying here. Like you play I mean, a smothering tithe yeah. and you just like don't do anything with the treasures, and people are gonna be like, "Hey, the guy who has fifteen mana, maybe we true. should team up and kill him." <laughs> that's true. Tomer, that's true. I think Tomer's probably right. Actually, the more I think about it, like it's I don't know okay, if okay. I put it number one overall, but I think it probably is like top five worthy. It's top ten top worthy. Five. What about what about EDH Rex decision making here? Pajuka Bug Reliquary Tower. I respect those. What do you guys yeah, think? Reliquary those, are, of... those are good lands. People poo poo Reliquary well, Tower, right, but like, I think it's good. No, it's the best, is right? Like Scavenger Grounds is Bajuka's not good. That's good. Yeah, you got the color identity issues, but yeah, you don't have to sack Bajuka Bog. So I think it is way better if you. The, if the you problem have is like you never hold it, right? It, it, like, yeah. This is the biggest. Like, even if I'm about to miss a land drop and I'm playing a table of like three reanimator decks, I'm still playing with Juke Bog in turn two. Yeah. Like, I'm not holding it, like, hoping it's something, right? So I find most of the time it doesn't really do its job. Like, it needs to be like a rest in peace land or something that comes yeah. down and keeps it clear. Scavenger Grounds has, has, I think, is an underrated land because I really value instant speed graveyard removal. And yes, you go down yeah. a land, but like, Either I go down land or I lose the game. I like having that in my back pocket. It's like, kind of got the double whammy of you got to go down the land and it's colorless. So and like that also cuts it out of some decks. And you, gotta you gotta need to have up. You have to have up a total like it taps. For, you have to tap it so three, and yeah, two in itself. But even with all that, like I wish there was a better scavenging grounds. But like for I, there's just no replacement for that. But yeah, it's probably still underrated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mog's Relic good. Ray Tower, I think. If, if, uh, this could be like the top ten most overrated cards. Like, no, oh, no, you, you, Rich, like, you, don't you, hurt you, you like need this. to, especially with like how good our utility land, like our like basically non colored lands are nowadays. Like, you're very optimistic that you play Reliquary Tower and you need to hold more than seven cards, and they're actually important, Richard. right? Because a lot of times you can draw fourteen, discard to seven, and your hand is killer, right? You don't actually need fourteen cards at hand, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I but think Richard, the really like over optimized for this dream scenario where you actually need 14 cards in hand and but you need Richard, to hold it for multiple packs. turns and you somehow got here and like the tower is the key to making it all work. <laughs> like just just play an ancient tomb or something, right? Like it, it just feels bad to discard a bunch of cards in hand size. I think that's the main the main reason is just to avoid the feel bad of it. The, the best the best scenario is you uh, land tax. <laughs> you can take all the planes out to deck them without discarding the hand size. And then you scroll rack and you put away all the basics and you get the other gas. Oh, and, the and then I strip mine you. Good. <laughs> yeah. All part but of the plan. It's, it's one of those cards that everyone has and they're like, oh, I might as well put it in because I'm going to draw so many cards. Like, you won't believe it. <laughs> they put it in, but oh. maybe it's better to just run a, a triome or something. And that's a situation. Have better mana. <laughs> I don't really it know. It depends on, my on decks. the deck. Yeah. Also, if I'm like in a three color deck or something, I really do not want to run colorless lands unless they're like absolutely necessary. Yeah. It also is in a lot of pre cons, and I think that helps cards end up on EDH rec lists. Like, yeah, if you look at cards that are high in the list, a lot of them are cards that show up in commander or pre con decks. Yeah. Everything on this list makes sense except for Empiric Tutor. That must be like the greatest yeah. card of all time. Everything else is like pre con cards or like relatively cheap. And then I you mean, have like Monic, Cyclonic. Cyclonic Group, the Monic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor have never shown up in any pre con and that I know of. And uh, yeah, the Monic Tutor expensive. is that expensive or is it yes. relatively? The Monic's like 35. Oh, wow. Well, they're they're about the same. To... They're both in the 30s. So yeah, if you're 30 playing to 40. Against players that play black, then they're just rolling in dough. That's what you know, right? They're, they're it's like forty dollars. The yeah. tutor, the fury tutor. All right, so those are our top cards of every color. So let us know in the comments. Do you agree? Is sort of body and mind <laughs> it fitting is. to be on this list? Well, there's there's no called, discussion. Bro. Is the top ten? I'm actually curious. Is the top <laughs> ten green cards just all ramp spells? <laughs> 
Like you go, you go through every single two mana ramp spell, and then you go through all the three mana ramp spells, and you go through all the four mana ramp spells, and then that's your top ten green. Why did you skip the one mana though? What happened to Utopia Sprawl, and what happened to like oh, yeah, yeah. What, what Wild Growth and they get yeah, yeah, Birds of Paradise? Those two should be up there. They get Farewelled. They still get Farewelled. They're like mana rocks. Yeah. No, but that's why you run to various com- protection <laughs> to to stop the Farewell, and then you're good, and then you're coasting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us know in the comments what your top cards of every color are, and uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm actually curious. There, there's some spicy colors here. Some, like, red are a lot more obvious, but we have some spicy ones in green and colorless. White was pretty spicy as well. Uh, what's the best counter spell? I think we're not 100% on the best counter spell as well. Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and like, and we'll see you next week. See you, everyone.